Welcome. Good evening. Welcome to uh, this workshop, budget workshop. And I'm going to, at this point, uh, ask uh, Selectman Joe Bruno to move along since he is the budget expert on the, uh, the budget. <laughs> what do you want to call yourself? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Think about late for dinner. <laughs> yeah, just don't call me late for dinner, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, well, thanks, Thank Sam. You. And, Thank um, you, I, I think we'll approach this in, in kind of a macro way to start with. And one of the big things is to identify what this board, I think, supports and what it doesn't support. And I think the big thing in front of us are these bond questions. And I think it would be helpful if we take those first and then move from there, whether or not there's support on these projects to move forward. Mm. Trying to find the project schedule. Does everyone think that's a good sounds like a good plan? Yeah, good that start. makes sense. Yeah. They may give me right off the bat what page we're on with those projects. I did. I pulled 68? out, yeah, 68. I, I pulled out the uh, printout that was sent was sent recently that highlighted each of the components. So, so mine might be slightly different than the ones you folks have. There was an email that went out. 68. A couple. Of, yeah. All right. Um, uh, Sorry about this. I should have been no, I am too. Be better prepared. 1500 for the program and it's a couple pages after that. So, budget information. Is that Yep, that's it. So go down. To which one? Down to the on mill rate equipment infrastructure fund. And that should give oh. you. Okay. That should give you this. Yep. yep. Okay. What do you have? I still haven't found it. I know the amount is 245438 if all the projects are approved, right? For the first year payment. For the first year payment. But we're listing these all out separately, it. correct? Right, right here. Okay. I think 69, 68, 69. Okay. Yes, right here. Tony you want Do you want this? Yeah, that'd be helpful. Thank you. All right, so here, here are the projects. The sand salt building on Plains Road, a replacement of engine two, backup generator for this building, the Main Street sidewalk project, and then the IRT projects, which are the fire pond, up on Tarkill, I believe it is, right? Oak Ledge. Oak Ledge, okay. Um, District 1 Public Safety to clear the lot in front. The Pole Barn, also on Plains Road for Public Works. The Valley Road Communication Tower. The Egypt Road Recreational Facility. And then we've already approved money out of contingency, I believe, to um, begin the engineering work on the Egypt Road. And then the bond this should cost about $35,000. One is the feeling, I think the biggest one we need to think about is the Egypt Road Recreational. That, that's the one that, the mo it's the most commitment from the town of $782,000 in order to do that. What is the, the sense of the board on that project? Mike? I'll start. Um, first of all, let me, let me tell you that I have worked out different scenarios on this whole bond 
as a package, and as, as we go through the conversation, I'll explain more about that, but the, the idea of a you know, $2.1 million bond, all-inclusive, I know is the easiest way for staff to show us um, kind of a wish list, which is what we ask them to do. Um, however, I, I don't think, given a discussion I hope we have about undesignated fund balance and how much to carry forward, um, there's probably some conversation tonight about anticipated uh, revenue sharing from the state and how that's going to affect us. Um, as we met last time, there was, you know, the governor talking about putting 40 million back in. Well, even putting 40 million back in, the number I'm hearing is not an increase from last year, actually a decrease still with that 40 million. So I think that's all part of this conversation, maybe not specifically on, on the Egypt road that you're asking about. Um, but it speaks to is a two point one million dollar bond single the way to go forward, which I do not believe it is. How do you look at these projects while using undesignated fund balance in our policy of that to pay for some of these things so you're not having a bond that's as large? And how do you work the timing of bonds if we are to go forward? In other words, the way it's currently proposed you know, you'd issue a $2.1 million bond this summer, potentially, to do all these projects. But the fact is that a lot of these projects, we wouldn't spend the money till 16 or 17. So I don't think that's physically a responsible way to, to go through this. Um, I went through and broke this out into years, which I'm going to put Danielle on the spot here in a minute to try to help me and see whether or not my assumptions for when these IRT projects might happen would happen, and then look at the possibility of undesignated fund balance to pay for things, not to pay for interest in this first year of a bond that we're not going to spend the money on for years if we go forward, um, and then potentially two bonds, and because I do see these projects in light of, um, you know, the Egypt Road pro project is probably a standalone question for the townspeople, I think. I think that was brought up at our previous meetings uh, when there was outlined with the budget <laughs> finance. Um, <coughs> and I think an education process. And a, But if, if they can't do the engineering until this summer, you're not even going to put a shovel into Egypt Road till next summer. So the idea of borrowing money this summer and holding on to it and paying interest on that didn't seem to make sense to me. Um, so I would see breaking out all of those projects you just talked about, Joe, into at least three different phases. So a, a year 14 phase, a, a town infrastructure phase, and a rec field phase. With that said, um, I've been working and going to the meetings on the rec fields, um, listening to Owens. I was, we were in this room talking to um, the... Um, Raymond Rec, which um, just so everybody's clear, Raymond Rec is not a department of the town. They are their own entity, and they provide rec services to the town as an independent entity. Um, Raymond Baseball Softball was represented there. Um, the soccer folks could not come, but they are part of Raymond Rec, and they sent an opinion to the meeting. Um, at that meeting, those folks were all going to go back to their folks and at least get the word out. I know Danielle's working on kind of a, a, a summary sheet of a page or two to be able to explain what the Raymond Rec fields are, um, where they would be, and how it would proceed. Um, and we've tentatively set a date in May if this group, you know, moves it along to at least send it to the public if, if we do do that that in May there would be a public hearing with drawings of how the field would be. Um, and I would suggest that if we do go forward that both of these bonds, if we end up approving them to send them to the public, they would be a ballot box item with an explanation the same way you would explain if it was a state bond, and how much you're looking to borrow, what the projects are, and what it means to our budget so that the citizens can read it and understand that if they agree to this, 
it's going to increase LD1 by this amount. It's going to increase your taxes potentially by this amount during this year and which years. And when I say this year, I don't, I don't mean the current budget year. I mean when we would borrow the monies. That way, from an IRT standpoint, Danielle can say, listen, the town voted positively on all these or negatively, so ignore this, these projects. We're still looking to do these projects. And, you know, the... Uh, the, the military services who are going to bid on these projects would have enough time to bid and know that there was support from our town. So that's kind of how I've approached this. And as I said, I, I am in favor at this point of sending the, the ball field question with some explanation out to the public in the ballot box in June. This coming June? This coming June. Okay. Other comments? <coughs> I guess, Nancy, oh, one guy. Yeah, no, I was just going to um, just uh, you know, say my piece in, in what Mike said, and, and I agree with a lot of what he had mentioned about, you know, the years that we need to borrow. It doesn't make a lot of sense unless it's an unbelievable interest rate on the bond, which I don't feel that borrowing it a year early is or would make it, and I don't feel that we're in that grade of shoes where it would make it make sense to do it a year early. Um, but I do feel that it should be separate from the rest of it. I do feel that it's a it's a great situation, and we really need to do our due diligence to make sure that if it did get pat get um, you know negative feedback, that um, we really looked at it to make sure that the opportunity that we're giving up. Is, uh, is worth giving up, because I'm kind of on the fence on it, um, but uh, it definitely should be broken out and, uh, and go from there, but. All right. So if, if we were to pull out the Egypt Road project, which is $800,000 state uh, town money, that gets us down to a $1.3 million total bond package that we would be looking at. I'm, I'm looking even lower, actually. Okay. Nancy, what is our undesignated? Nancy, you should probably be sitting over here by the mic. You sure? I already got my oh, you, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Do we have, have a mic right in front of you. Do we have a portable <laughs> mic? There you go. Um, what is our undesignated fund balance right now? It's about 2.2 .2 million. 2.2? 2 .2. Yeah. It's gone down. It's a little some. over 2.2. Some of it has been moved, used uh, for contingency by the selectmen this year. Okay. So we're the, at the Valley Tower facility. All right. So we're at 2.2 million, and our policy tells us we need about 1.7. Thereabouts. Somewhere yeah. in there. Fifteen percent of last year's commitment would be 1662. So okay. I think if you round up with the possibility yeah. that the selectmen still have an opportunity for contingency, you're at least at 1.7, Joe. Yes. Okay, so that leaves us $500,000 available. Based uh, on our policy from 2007. Based on, on our policy. 564. 564,000? Yep. Okay. How much are people comfortable taking out of undesignated fund balance to fund some of these projects? I'll start again, Joe. Yep. So here's what I did. Danielle, you ready? Yep. You want the mic? <laughs> nope. <laughs> so Danielle, I looked at this and I said for year 14, so starting this summer, mm -hmm. both IRT and the other projects, mm -hmm. I pulled out generator, sidewalk, fire pond, public safety, pole barn, and communications tower. Mm -hmm. Do you know from an IRT standpoint if, I mean the communications tower you've talked about that they, they're ready to go this summer on that? The um, not this summer, no. The public safety site distance one, they want to start. 
they do that one. Right. Okay. So communication tower might be next summer? Will be next summer. We're, we're trying to talk them into sending someone to do engineering, but it depends upon the level of commitment from the town. So that would move to 15. Pole barn, 15 or 14? 15. 15. Okay. Because there, you have to... No, that's all right. No, I'm, I'm good. You don't have to explain. Just, just, you can just help me. Public safety, you said, fire pond this year? 15. Fire pond would also be 15. Mm-hmm. Okay. So not, not 14. Sidewalk? John? Don? Beginning of, um, beginning of the state fiscal year, so that's the 15 and the 16. So that wouldn't be till summer 15 as well? Correct. Right. Okay. Generator uh, for the public for the for this building now fourteen so fourteen so that totally changes my my calculations sand salt building sixteen or fifteen that's separate from IRT nine that's separate yeah that's separate that's not in but that's IRT. for this summer that's, for, that's for this fiscal year correct. You're saying 14. I thought that was part of IRT. So the sand salt's not IRT. So no, that would the be the pole barn is IRT, right? Pole barn's IRT. So sand the, salt. The sand, the sand salt, given that it's not IRT, is flexible as to what you want to do. Okay. The so, year you want to do it. But you could do it. You were thinking this summer. I was thinking this summer. Yes. Okay. Uh, not edge No, that's right. The sand salt or the pole barn? Sand salt. Sand salt. Pole salt. barn is 15. So. Okay. And. Chief? Can I ask a quick question? Keep yeah. going, yeah. Doesn't it make sense to do building a sand salt building in the same area as you're looking at a pole barn that you put them together? The pole barn's actually District 2 down district the street two, here. Oh, okay. I was reading that. I thought they were Plains Road. Just, yeah. It, yeah, it does say pole yeah. barn at Plains Road. Yeah. Well, that could toss back and forth to the location. Okay. Well, it, and I, as long as we're on that point, if we're on that point, I mean, I'm still an advocate for Plains Road. I know that maybe the, I don't know if you and Bruce have talked about District 2 as your preferred location, but I think that that puts more infrastructure on that lot and, you know, commits it more towards that industrial use versus anything else. Yeah, I don't if we're okay we, with that, then that's fine. Yeah, we hadn't really, that hadn't really been... Um, but to me, a pole barn is not very attractive, and I think it's better, better in a gravel, better. Tr gravel yeah. pit. Yep. Yeah. Myself. Well, pole, ba pole barn could be attractive. It's going to win kind of side you use. Mm, you know, that's I mean, true. You don't know it's pole until you get inside. That's true. But. Okay. So that's 14. Sand salt, well, so pole barn's 15 because of IRT. Pole barn would, was hopefully going to be this year. Um, Chief, yes. the, the 425 for engine two. Yes. Any of that coming from? From current CIP? Yeah. No, okay. It was scheduled to come out of uh, bond or... Yeah. No, that's fine. That's okay. what we were talking about. And that would be as soon as you could get it, I assume. Yeah, once we get approval, it's still a 10-month process to, to put it together. And so you have to have approval and go through the bid and then order it, and it's a 10-month commitment at that point. What do you need to order it? How much money? So, um, up front to order it in July. Um, I assume they'd want a chassis payment up front, and that will lower the cost a little bit. But, uh, um, I don't know the amount. You're, you're probably looking at a hundred and a half for the chassis, I bet. Yeah, yeah 80 to 100, 100 and a half even. Yeah. Right. So if you called it 200, you'd have plenty. Yes. Yeah. And then 10 months later, the rest of the truck would arrive. Mm -hmm. The payment to go with it. Yeah. Okay. Um, Danielle, back to you. On Egypt Road, mm -hmm. you're talking about, other than Owen, nothing this summer, right? No, that one will require the most of the engineering work. Uh, if we were going to get that going, we'd, have, we'd need about like $150,000 to get that project started because of the environmentals. And this year? This year. So I have two that I'm missing. What did you do about the Valley Road? Is that Valley Road is uh, that's communication towers. That's 15. Um, now, when you're speaking years, clear. like 14 versus 15, are you talking calendar years? I'm talking no, fiscal year. Fiscal year. All right. Well, as of July. I'm talking as of, yes. they want to do the communication tower this, this summer year. or next summer? That was said their year start, so they want to do it at the beginning of 15. Correct. So, but 
So, so that would be that would be this fiscal year. Yeah. Correct. So you would so for the communication tower you would need the money. No. But now now means what you said at the beginning of January. No, as of like April 2015. So they want to be here this summer to do that. No. I think what you're saying is no. if they, they want to start earlier Early in the spring than our fiscal year. Right, that's what I'm saying. So like not, so part of the 14-15 uh, okay. budget year, right. but not, but late in our 14-15 All right, so let me rephrase my question. Yeah, when do they want to put a shovel in the ground that we would need materials in our town? April 2015. 20, okay, good. So that's yeah. this fiscal year. This fiscal year. Coming fiscal year. Coming right. Right. Yep. The tail end. The and tail I think end. that's yeah. what you're trying to get that's at. That's what I'm trying to get at is the timing of when we need the yeah. monies as right. opposed to do we need the monies in July. Right. What, what about all these other ones, the fire pond? Fire ponds uh, will be April 2015. The um, site distance is 2014, uh, will be this summer. Um, tower site. Is going to be April 2015. Pole um, barn? Pole barn will be April 2015. Okay, so that's all this fiscal Good year. Mentioned. When are they starting the sidewalk project? That, will, uh, that is June uh, 2015. So that, year that's still that's, that's this year. Still this year. So really, everything is in this fiscal year. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. No. No. Oh. Which which yeah, one at is the it? End, some well, earlier wh what I'm trying to figure out is is part of my part of my angst here is I don't want to pay <laughs> two hundred forty-five thousand dollars in interest this year because we got the money in July. Right. I would rather I would rather use two hundred forty-five thousand dollars. <coughs> cash as we need it to get these projects going and maybe you issue your first bond next February <coughs> next March and maybe your second bond is next fall you know fall of 15 for the to get the rest of the money for the you know I'm, I'm looking at it more like that we can ask for a voter approval now <coughs> But it doesn't mean the schedule has to be July because we don't need the money in July. Yeah. So that, that's, that's part of my... Right. Yeah, because we don't need 100% of the funding. You have to, like, these projects right. are going to be going over for like, the next three years. We just have to make sure that they're ready. So Correct. So, we, so the money will ebb and flow depending on what our needs are. So, so if we could put a number to <coughs> Look, cash. Right? Yeah. I, I just added up these projects in the middle. You take out the Edge and Two and the Sand Salt Building, and you take out the Egypt Road, that amounts to $285,500 where we could use from undesignated fund balance to do this. Correct. Okay. Without That's what, having yeah. to issue a yeah. bond. Correct. As long as we have the voter approval that we know it's going to happen. Right. 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 So I think when, if you, the good thing about the ballot box in June would be we will know what the town's sentiments are for the bonds in June. Doesn't mean we have to issue the bonds until April. Yep. Until, I mean, you know, depending when stuff is due, that can be the plan. But we would know that far ahead of time so you have the confidence that Chief can order his fire engine, you know, the IRT stuff is communicated. Um, and those kind of things, right? So it, it, it seems far better to schedule it. It makes total sense. Mm -hmm. That way, so that we're not wasting money when we don't need it. Okay, things off now. And then if you look at the debt, the, the spreadsheet that was sent out with our debt service calculation, um, you know, as we retire bonds this year, That's going to free up $288,000 of bond payments this year will be available to us next year's budget, mm. of which $177,000 needs to go towards the road construction bond more than this year. So that's going to leave us with $111,000 to be flat, if my calculations are correct, Miss Nancy. 
ish. Ish. Hundred. It's gonna be my my calculations are one hundred eleven thousand. We would have towards bond payments starting in our next budget year. So, just to be clear. <laughs> That's right. You're running the meeting. I'm trying to be clear here. People, people agree on everything that's in the middle of this page. Is that right? Do we all agree on that? Without taking a formal vote. You mean under the IRT? I mean, what? No, yeah, the backup generator, <coughs> the, the sidewalk project. Okay. Yes. And then everything in the IRT except the rec facility. We could fund those out of cash right now. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Are we in agreement on that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Can I ask a question? Is, as I outlined, it's going to take money to move forward with some of these other projects, even though you don't need to fully fund them now. So will there be enough to cover that as well? We're not there yet. Well, okay. Which are the projects are you talking about? Well, the, the rec field. facility? The rec field and... Well, I mean... What we have to do as a town is go to the voters and see if they want that rec field. I'm not sold on it. i got to tell you, I'm not sold on spending that kind of money for these new facilities on Egypt Road. I, I, think, I think it's just a great opportunity. That's the, that's the it, least. It's a great it? opportunity, but i got to be sold on right. spending and 780 And I'm a huge advocate of the rec and right. that, that whole thing, and, and I agree. Yeah, I'm not it's, sold it's yet. That it's, it's a good investment for the town. But, that's but it just can't me. be sold as a Raymond rec facilities got to be sold as a town facility right. that everybody can use right. Right. but I think also that the people need to be able to have a vote on it yeah. you're not saying I mean I think these other things to me are needs <coughs> and in the Raymond rec field is definitely like a want but I think it's right. good for the town but I think the town's people should be able to vote yay or nay yeah I quite agree on that <coughs> I'm a, I'm a I'm in favor of it. I, I mean, so you can go to the town <coughs> meeting and ask them to vote up and down, up mm -hmm. or down on this thing. And if they vote yes, then you can say, well, this we need to take a bond out or right. spend some money now. You, you know, allow the town to do that. Right. And I think that's a proper way to handle that one. And I think, Danielle, to answer your question, is we do have to come up with the engineering monies. With the and I think that that comes out of cash as well, right, Joe? You're at two hundred and what? Yeah, we got about two. we're two eighty five to fund all those mm -hmm. projects. So that gives you two hundred eighty thousand. So there's still room without issuing a bond to right. put monies, and that can be part of the question. Yeah. So we would come up with a dollar amount on what would the bond be, which would be less than the eight hundred thousand, because it's, if it's approved, you would use some money out of undesignated fund balance, which mm -hmm. would then lower the bond you would need, which would lower your interest in payments going forward. Okay, so that would be a way to handle that. We would have to get a basic number, you know, if it's a hundred grand of that for engineering and, and that, if that's a plug number, great. Um, and so we would do potentially that. Do we need engineering for other projects? We've started, but yes, there will be a little bit more required to get the final permitting in place. So, you know, part of our due diligence would be to figure out what is a plug number for all engineering on all of the IRT projects and be able to break them out in between the two bonds so that we could spend the engineering money this year without taking out the bond money till we needed it. Are people... Okay, so... I think we're all in agreement on that, yes, on that right? The 285 yep. coming out of undesignated fund balance. Now you got $1,025,000 to do the sand and salt building and replace engine two. So we would need to take out about, well, we could either make a down payment on engine two, but you still have to pay for it in this fiscal year. So you somehow you have to come mm -hmm. up with that money. Or you could say, I'm going to bond a million dollars for the sand and salt building and a new replacement on engine two. <clears throat> By the way, what happens to the current engine two when you, I mean, is this included? It, uh, it meets a sad end. 
it becomes a uh, a pile of metal. It becomes it becomes it goes to an old engine house or no no it, uh, well sometimes they do sometimes they go to a farm and live out their life that way but this one may become a uh, public works truck. Uh, it still has some some I guess residual value yet to be evaluated but but it uh, will live a, live a lesser a lesser life in public works. Does it become a plow truck? <laughs> but uh, but norm normally what happens with a truck this old is they go to bed and you get a couple of thousand bucks for them. Yeah, and they're not worth much. It's 24 years old? Yeah, 24. Correct. Yeah. Once they pass voting age, they usually lose some value. Yes. Okay, so so on that million dollars, the people think it ought to be just one bond for the salt. I mean, well, that begs the question on some of these, as as Danielle pointed out, that some of these that you already put the two hundred and whatever two hundred eighty-five thousand, right? Yeah. Those are not all. All that money is not needed in this year for those projects. Yeah, it is. No, oh, it isn't. Yeah. No. Yeah. From April to July. Yeah. yeah. But. Yeah. But if you look at the communication tower, if they're not putting a shovel in the ground till April of 15, yeah. we don't need to buy all those supplies in this year because they're not going to finish by June 30 of next year. They're going to be going throughout the whole summer. Yeah. So it's possible. Are we sure of that? Well, it's. I think in two months? I was working weekends? Oh, yeah. Oh, but that's what they're here for. But Working weekends? He's constructing a tower that's already been built. They're going to put the pad in the groundwork and put the tower. They have to. And this isn't this isn't this isn't weekends, weekends either. I don't think. Yeah. Oh, this one's not weekends. No, I think they're. Danielle may correct me on this, but I believe once they in camp to do these projects, you know, they're here. They're coming from out of state. They're they're here for the duration. They're not coming just for the weekend. Right. Daniel, the communication tower can be finished in two months. Ish, yeah, but best yeah. get. Two to three months, yeah. Okay, all right. But you know, Mike, one thing I don't want to do is say, okay, we're only going to fund in this fiscal year, and then we're going to wait until the next fiscal year and have more money to pay for other things. Mm. I think that's bad budgeting. Okay. That that sounds to me like what the state does. Just <laughs> Like push things into the next fiscal year, and, and then you know. Okay. So I, I think we set the money aside, we make sure it's there, and, and it's just dedicated to the project, and it's done with. All right. So then, following that logic, yeah, I would like to give Chief enough for a down payment this year. Early, out yeah. of undesignated fund balance, not out of a bond. Okay. Which gets us to And then, look at a bond and move. There you go, Nate. I, hear him. I told you I was going to pick on you. And move sand salt till summer of four, summer of 15. And How long of a project is that, Nathan? I would have to say that's going to be probably three months. Okay. Three to four. So do the bond for the sand salt next April and the remaining of engine two. You know, next April. That gives him the money to pay the the unit off when it comes in and it gives the sand salt and gives you a year to prepare for that. Yeah, but don't and you have to pay before? I think he has to pay before it before what? the engine. Part of it. Correct. That's what right, I'm saying. Right. <laughs> I thought you had to do the rest of it is what it is. No, on delivery we on delivery. Okay, the rest right. Of it. So I'm trying to figure out that logic there. So then you're not paying any interest or payments on that bond. So you give, you give him a down payment mm -hmm. on the replacement. Mm -hmm. Hundred thousand? Will that do it, Bruce? Hundred twenty-five. Yeah, I'm trying to find out. Because right one now. thing I don't want to do is get like the undesignated fund balance right down to the correct. And that's yeah. what this will do. Yeah. yeah we'll well, find that if we do the two hundred thousand, because that'll knock us down. Normally, you have to pay the cost of the chassis. Correct. Right. Normally, you do in order to get the discount mm -hmm. to get the price to where we're talking about. Um, Four twenty-five is actually a low price on a fire apparatus these days, and so. Uh, it's actually gone from 400 last year to 425 in this year's dollars. Mm. So it has changed dramatically. But in order to control that cost, I, I, we would need to do that and you know, prepay that chassis. But, but for a truck of that magnitude, my best guess is you're going to be somewhere north of 100,000 bucks just for the Very chassis. Very likely, yeah. And I, I'm going I'm to call one of the vendors and just see what the chassis cost is because I'm well, not aware. That ball was 100. Twenty thousand. Joe, part of my rationale for this would be perfect. Probably is there's already in this budget two hundred forty-five thousand for the interest 
and payments on the bond. So if that's if you did the, the whole thing. That's correct. But if you're but if we take that and instantly put that which is coming out of undesignated fund balance and put it towards paying cash for these, then you don't have that in the undesignated fund. You, you, you can't have both. Right. So if you use the cash instead of paying interest and, and uh, you know, paying your principal back. Well, you're using 285000 in cash. That means that gets you down to a $1 million $1.8 million bond at that point if you do everything else. Correct. So, like I said, the Egypt Road discussion to me is separate. separate. I'm willing to bond a million dollars for the sand and salt building and the, and the engine too, but maybe not take the bond. That's what I'm saying, right. Uh, That's why you give him the deposit money now. <coughs> The question is how much of a deposit do you need? That's what he's finding out now. So, so if it's arrest. what are you you're at two eighty? I'm at two eighty. Yeah. So if, if it's one fifty that leaves you hundred and thirty. And we went high, so Yeah. And then take a bond out in like February. Right. Or February. March. Right, as, yeah. as late as you can with the idea that you know, so there's as little effect this year yeah. on the bond. Okay. We're still breaking it down to three yep. different things. Does that make sense, people? Makes sense to me. The only yep. thing that I would be concerned about with multiple um, bond issuance dates is you're going to have multiple issuance cost. Right. It, it's yeah. at 35000 multiplied. But the fact is, Unless, I don't think you have to have multiple bond issue dates because if that Egypt Road project gets approved at town meeting, mm -hmm. that becomes part of the bond. At that yeah. The other thing you might want to consider too, or we might want to look at, having done this in the past, is a bond anticipation note and one issuance. Right. I think that might pay off. Yeah. yeah. I mean, there, there's some options. Yeah. Yeah. Well, can I ask something? All right, so if we're doing this, but doesn't, we get that money down to what you say, 130000 Yeah. So, but Danielle's going to need if this gets approved, 150000 Yeah. So where does that come from? That, to me, would be part of the bond. Okay, and, and that we would add with, with the, the Plains Road and the... Yeah, yeah but we're not that taking that until there. later. Oh. That money's in there. That 100 mm -hmm. that she's asking for is in... Is in uh, <coughs> it's in this... It's in the... Uh, wherever the, the uh, Egypt Road project is. It's in that number already. It's not an additional number. Oh, okay. It's part of that. No, number. right. But we have to come up with it. Correct. And we're not. We don't have that with the rest of it. I see what you're saying. It would be part of that million dollar bond. Is but we're not going to get that bond till later, right? And she needs right. that now, correct? One seventy-five. So one seventy-five. One seventy-five. Okay. So that gets you down to one hundred five thousand. So it covers covers those two. It covers everything in the middle, and it, the only thing it doesn't cover is the hundred fifty thousand that she would need for if the town approved the red field. And you're it's positive on the 150, Danielle. That seems like a lot for <coughs> for engineering. Should we switch to five and zero and make 105? <laughs> it also includes the permitting that takes the state, so that takes almost 12 months. Yeah. Preparation, engineer drawings, and permitting is described below. Please note this is a substantial substantial effort and will require approximately six months or more to complete the permitting. One hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars plus. Uh, $25,000 for boundary and topography survey of this property, which we're already completing some of this year and knocking that number down to 19000 from twenty five. So <coughs> This is like, you know, because it's a substantial piece of land and we have to make sure that we have the appropriate permitting. We have to make sure that the fields and everything are in place so that that way, um, you know, we're not affecting any... So Wins, I, like I'm that. of the opinion that that just pushes the project back. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel. 
from a money if, standpoint. If it passes. Right, if it passes that part, of, right, because he's doing the, he's already got money to do the salamander study, right, the vernal pools? Correct. <laughs> basically what it is, the yeah. salamander and frog study, so right. he's got to do that. And if it's approved at town meeting, and we're trying to make this work, he may not be able to start the permitting until he knows he's going to have money next mm -hmm. February. Right. I, there also is a, like, are, so you're just moving because you want as much of this is in cash as possible versus being part of the bond? Is that why it's structured this way? Okay. Trying um, to keep the budget bond. down because we've got retiring right. bonds in the future and retiring bonds this year so well the only reason why I was asking is because I know the bond structure you can always uh, retro apply money that you've spent yourself to, toward the bond you can you should put that as part of, for three months three months yeah so that would be up to November so if you issued the bond in in February so that's the only reason why I was clarifying that question but, and then, yeah. but um, I think uh, one of the principles that we should be following, and I think we've talked about this before, is the idea of using excess undesignated fund balance for major non-recurring capital improvements. Right. Right? Correct. Right. Which is what we're trying to do. Right. I get it. I got it. Yeah. Do you know, if we push it, is that still going to make it, and the town passes it, you know what I'm going to ask. Is that still going to make it available that they'll still want to do it? Well, uh, we had we had just had a meeting with Captain Kane from the IRT. He's one of the directors and coordinators, and he was actually looking to send people out at 2014 to help us with the engineering work, which may potentially bring that price down a little bit. Mm -hmm. But as I said, I'd have to have a firm commitment from the town. Because he'd have to be requesting funding from his superiors in order to come out here and put the effort into working the land. And that's what the ballot box question would be, right. is a right. firm but commitment from the town. But I, but I think we could sell that concept because, I mean, when they go to these, you know, <clears throat> forward locations, for foreign countries, to build these facilities, uh, generally they have to do the engineering too. I mean, that's part of the program. So for them to come in and, and do engineering and, and some of the other design elements, uh, I think that could be sold to them as, a, as an attractive piece of the overall project. Right. But that's a different group, perhaps, than Kane's group, maybe. Who knows? Although he said he was interested. Well, he, he's the actual right. coordinator, so he, he oh, okay. helps to facilitate right. all the different groups. So okay, so it may not be the same group that's doing the work on the field. It'd probably be a different group. That's the key here. You're going to have different groups of... of uh, military uh, contingents who are going to quote unquote bid on these elements of the project, <coughs> i.e. evaluate it, decide if it meets their training needs. If it does, then they would put in a proposal and then I, I suppose if, you know, that's something, that's what Kane does, right? Approves those proposals? Yes. Okay. okay. But yeah, Don, you made a good point on bond anticipation. That's, a, that's always a possibility. Yeah, bond, in, you don't want to issue two or three bonds. You want right. to do a bond anticipation note because it'll be cheaper than, than, than three issuances or two right. issuances. Yeah. Uh, I think I know where we're at. Uh, <laughs> so that would only leave 250 on the fire engine towards the bond. So you'd be looking at that part of the bond would be 250 for the fire truck and 600. That that's if it comes in at 425. Correct. Yeah. We're huh. a good when faith estimate is telling us that. Hmm. Okay. But when will that. we find for the final number? when you go out to buy one. It must be another Chevrolet then, huh? Close. How are the ignition switches on those things? <laughs> All right. Um, <clears throat> okay, I, th I think I know where we're at on All right, on so that's, that's now 850 on that yeah. one, and then it would be, so you'd be around 1.6 to 1.7 right. on a bond if the if Egypt road all moves ahead. Right. Yeah. So that would lower it by over 400 grand. Yeah. All right. Um, why don't we start going through the budget itself? And if there's any questions, I, I, I highlight some highlighted some things that um, you know could be different now, maybe uh, that stood out to me. Oh my God! Oh, here we go. One, one of the things under administration that stood out to me was the huge increase in audit and legal. I, uh, 
I don't know. Tom, where are we running this year? I know we're probably a little high this year, more well, that's, so. That's where we get this estimate from, is our actual experience this year. But th this year was an unusual year, in my <coughs> opinion. And we hopefully. Had, you know, it, it's, it's kind of an outlier <coughs> from where we've been. And hopefully we go back to what our usual pattern has been. We had, had a, but do we base it on the high number and hope for the remainder, or do we come in lower? No, I'm... In my opinion, you come in back to where you normally are. Which is the 30 or 26? Yeah, the 30. 30. Mm. So, well, let that begs the question. Nancy, do you know last year what we spent on legal audit? I don't have the, the final. Do you think it was more than the 26,000 we budget? Yes. Oh, it was 30,000. 30, sorry. But it's more than a lot more. I mean, you're talking 60% more than where we've been at. Yeah, but you, you never know. You never know what's going to come up. And that's, I think that's so, the unknowns. But if you do, if you budget that way, then you're going to say, well, I'm going to put 100000 in legal and on it just so I'm on the safe side. No, but, the, okay, what if you back down half than what it is from, you know, between the, the 30 and the 48? Where you're you're kind of compromising a little bit, but you're still covering well, yourself. Forty of that's budgeted for legal, not forty-eight. Eight is for uh, audit. Eight is for audit. Oh, a, there are a number of factors that are that are driving this. I think Joe yeah. has a great point about the unusual circumstances this past year with respect to some legal uh, actions. I don't think that will repeat. However, I think that um, the issue of the enhanced level of due diligence that we do. And I mean, it is very enhanced mm -hmm. over, over what uh, is typical for a small town, which you can't ever go wrong by being too careful. But, so but, that's some, what but sometimes you are too cautious. Correct. And the reason that we are too cautious, perhaps, is that we've been under, I would call it uh, a microscopic uh, analytical review, let's call it that, looking for defects and problems, when a lot of times you can do things... Um, in a small town still in Maine, using common sense and uh, good intentions. So that's the, that's the dilemma. To me, it's always easier to defend common sense than to be so cautious that you call a lawyer every time. Well, we don't, no, we don't call around. a lawyer every time, but what we do do is we run every single contract, every single issue that, of that type through the lawyer. Yeah. For a good example would be right now we're, we're doing a, another uh, grant 319 grant. We had good success with the previous contractor when we, we used them, FB Environmental. I might as well say who it is. We used them previously, no issues. Um, so this time around, though, we're going to put them through our new enhanced process, which is, you know, parsing and uh, improving to the town's advantage their contract that isn't uh, free. Will there be a problem? Probably not. If there were a problem, would you want the, the improved contract or the original one, you'd probably want the improved one. So there's a decision well, point where you can save a little money, and uh, I think Nancy and I are in agreement that we would save the money. We would save the money. I would, too. Yeah. On people we've used before and have huh. I, it, it all depends what the contract is for and how much it exposes the liability of the town. I mean, that's what, that's what you have to balance is, what am I opening up myself to oh, I, if I, something's I, wrong here? I, know, I, and, and yeah, I, I hear you that there are people in town who criticize you for whatever you and do. And it's a sharpshooter environment trying right. to find defects, and, and so we're trying what? to have absent defects. Right, but you're never going to be absent from defects, but you also can use a lot of common sense and say some of the stuff isn't yeah. necessary. Well, I've, had a, I've had a pretty good track record over my career with right. common sense, and I'm fine with it, but I need the backing, and I know I have that of the board, but we have drifted more to explain why we're spending more We've drifted towards more review. Yeah, and I think maybe too much review, but that's just me. I mean, so, I, I, so uh, I know I don't call my lawyer very often. Well, and uh, and we because it's three hundred and fifty dollars an hour, and and you know what? I'm so cheap, I don't want to spend that right, money. Right, right. And, and so, chances. so, so the so the direction that I need at some level from the board is that's what you want to do. Right. And I'm fine with that. What do people think?
What's it, your cheap or that? Then I'm cheap. <laughs> 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 you look yourself open for that one. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, I definitely see. Oh, Fry Island, yes, of course. Yeah. There's another see, that's in the anomaly category. I see Don's reasoning. Hmm. You know, when you are under the microscope, then you tend to send more to the lawyer to make sure that you're covering, you, you're, you're covering, you know, you're, you're covering your tracks, you're, you're dotting your eyes and crossing your T's. Is last year's 30k, 8,000 of it audit also? About seven. About well, seven. Yes, we, we spent just on this seven. And, and remember, we just went out to bid, right? And we have how many people responded? Oh, well, a lot. I don't know. Four responses. Four, four responses that we're going to be looking at. Yeah. So, funny, funny right. lady. So this, this budget, we're looking at 40K in legal, and last year we spent somewhere around 23. So about this year right. we spent oh, okay. Yeah. Hmm. So in legal. But there were a lot of outstanding things. Yeah, the, and Danielle's hearing me from the audience. She's ta talking about... You know, Fry Island, which I should mention, which may not may not be done. It may be done. We don't know. Right. But those legal expenses are charged to the planning board, aren't they? They're not. For our defense. Okay. The only thing we can pass through are, are legal reviews directly related to things that benefit them. If we're doing things that would be in the interest of the town, that's on us. Okay. So I, I think we could lower it, given that when and with the understanding that hopefully we're not going to be sued again as a town and have to, to follow that to court. And and I think we've done review of, of a lot of things hmm. in the last couple of years that shouldn't have to be reviewed again because right. they should be primarily the same. Right. So yes, I, I don't know what the number is less. I mean, I, I would be say fifty percent of the increase instead of increasing eighteen or so. It would. Well, well why don't we do a twenty percent increase to legal, legal and audit? That will get you thirty-six thousand dollars. Because even though we budgeted thirty last year, we still used thirty. But we went more than thirty, then. Yeah. Right. Right. We went we more than thirty, but we shouldn't have the other. You right. can't base it on this year, is what I'm getting at. No, yeah, because it's an exception. No, no but you can use this year as an influential factor. You can, I mean, but, I, but so it's also an outlier. What if we just even went in at 30? My point, it's an outlier. You look at the last six years, what yeah. you budgeted, and then all of a sudden you have one bad year. You don't base your entire budget going forward on that bad year. You say, okay, what's the mean? What's it look like? The 36000 makes sense to me. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm hopeful that you're right. Is that the legal... Yes. Legal and audit. And audit? Right? Isn't that oh, what that says? It's both. I mean, it's audit and legal. It is both. The additional Okay. Well, okay, let's say you have 8000 for legal and you want uh, 8000 for audit and 30000 for legal. That gets you 38000 Put you back to 30 for the, yeah. That cuts back 10000 So you're dropping down 10000 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, I'm going to go with 38,000. Anybody else see anything that, out, that stands out? I looked at assessing in town hall and there wasn't much there. There was... We, we shifted some money around, that's why I think the the amount in um, assessing goes up. You got got 6,000 between both categories. Yeah. yeah. You there's really not, there's really assessing not. Assessing and 1,500 in town hall. Right, so there's really not much there. Mm -hmm. Percentage-wise, it's a lot, but I mean the assessing, the contract assessor went up 5,000. That's most of the cost of that. It's one of the, on the town hall, one of the benefits of having an old building, right? small old building is, you know, that we have substantially upgraded over a period of years is that relatively speaking, compared to, you know, much larger, more modern building, I think we're, we're operating this thing pretty efficiently at huh? this point, I think. So when I, when I get to insurance, there's three items that actually stood out for me. Social Security, Health and Dental, 
and retirement. Social Security is all based off payroll yeah. with yeah. Add, a, <clears throat> add one figure to that figure that you calculate your payroll for your gross. Is that increase? The uh, Pike is still 0.0765 Right. Yeah. And it's been that same for a handful of years. Can I ask something? Mm -hmm. Are these numbers that have increased, is that based on what else is added into this budget as far as like um, salaries? <coughs> yeah, like, like what? The 1.4% <coughs> increase. Are we adding staff? We're adding some staff also, is that right? We're increasing in this budget um, the station manager for the broadcast that's, studio. That's what I'm asking. And, and two um, part-time laborers for public for works. For public works. That's it, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. On the health and dental side, have we heard what the increase is going to be? You just put in a placeholder from Jeff at this point, is that right? For from for Lisa, for uh, vehicle and liability. Oh, for, I'm sorry. Yeah, but you but you have a place. It's just you put in a, an estimate. Just an estimate. Right. That's all. And that estimate is fifteen percent increase. If you take into consideration another full time person. Okay. I'm not doing emails, I'm actually using my calculator just so people know I'm not sending in text messages. <laughs> so, tweet, Joe, tweet, Joe. Yeah. it's like you're watching baseball, man. No. <laughs> Yankee, the phone, man. Yankees TV. have already won this afternoon. <laughs> so, Joe. So, it's a 12% increase. Joe, right, to follow up on that, yeah. I don't know how much the, the additional person is, then you, then you have an increase on top of that. Um, because the 229 figure, we ended up coming in under that this year, didn't we? The proposed. Yeah. So far. So far. Yeah, by a lot, though. By a lot, right. I mean, the anticipated is that we'll be significantly under that. Yes. So, Joe, I'm comfortable knocking that number back as well. Me too. Yeah. But how can we? Yeah, perhaps. Nancy, did you have calculated in there two our per diems that we requested this year in that effect? Some of what we're talking about I'm Social sorry? Security. We have per diems figured in for the summer months. And that should have been in there. Anything that may that's be got in for salary has. Yeah, and that, that affected. That, that, that would be in the Social Security line then. Yeah. Yeah. So, Mike, you're saying the 229 from last year, can't, we're coming in lower. Remember, we carry a liability out there to cover correct. the deductible. That's correct. We, so, we can we carry the right. full liability of that deductible, and I think we now have a few years under our belt. We've never come close. So, you know, if we you can, didn't cover the full deductible in the current budget. We knocked some of that off. We did. Uh, we didn't carry a full number That's forward. Okay. So we shouldn't take more from that. I would think we could be at 240 for that, Joe. Because we're coming in so much lower from last year. I, I think our experience would show us. I would have to confirm. What's the solid number on additional person, Nancy? We don't have a solid number. We're not there yet. We don't we don't have what, what's the solid number on additional person now, this Probably year? Like 15,000. Okay. So 246 is just, just the placeholder. Yes. I hate playing with insurances just because you never know no. how things are now. I mean, if we're going to play with anything else, fine, but I think insurance is the one thing that. So you're looking to go down to what, 240? I was thinking 240, and, and we're not playing with the insurance because it oh. doesn't limit the ability for them. They're, it's going to come in at whatever it comes in. Right. right. But from a budgeting standpoint, if we've consistently been over our estimate, can we come back a little bit? And then 
if you know all of a sudden you get a 15 percent increase which i don't see happening in the in the pool not from i don't know what you've what have you experienced this year and, uh, mine was four percent this year yeah so we're not seeing the, the and, large and jumps it was all due to the affordable care act I mean, it was all the new taxes right anybody else out there what have you what have you folks seen recently anybody so some of them reset this year because of ACA ACA compliance. So, uh, it, you know, really. Did. But short of that, what was approved by the by the insurance board was on individuals uh, four and a half, four and a half, and the ones that one of the the ones that extended uh, had a three and a half percent increase. So. So at 240, we're looking at a 5% increase. So I, I think that's reasonable. So it saves 6750 Yep. Okay. Any other, anything on insurance? Anything else? All right, how about the big question is whether we want a full-time person for the broadcast station. I say yes. I say because what happens is we can have them doing many things, but we have one person to report to, and we don't have to count hours, you know, with meetings and stuff like that. And with all the different meetings that are going on, with all the different videos, with the video being the um, record, um, official record. Um, streaming. Yeah. There's a lot of things that add to that. So. I, I am for it. You're all for a 40-hour person, or? I, 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 but I think there's enough stuff, I believe, for 40 hours. Yes. Unless, unless I'm wrong. I mean... Some of the information that came our way, that, sorry Joe, I should have, but some of the information that came our way after our budget finance joint meetings, um, we did get uh, an outline talking about a couple of communities close to us, talking about the, is it Lake Region television services um, and how much, for instance, Casco pays um, <coughs> per month for those services um, and things of that nature, um, our requirements without a, an assistant, when you look at towns like Harpswell, which was given as an example about our size, and, and even looking at Casco and, and those, um, if we don't go full-time, I think we have to come up with a better structure of job responsibilities, time expectations, um, and have the ability to say no. Um, you know that, all right, I've reached the end of my hours this week. I was asked to do these tasks. This is where we are. I will continue. Um, so, so I think it's one or the other based on the fact that we have changed our structure in the last few years, right? It used to be just select board members. The official record was the DVD, you know? Then it was planning board and budget and appeals. So now all of our meetings pretty much are headed to the point where the video is the, the record, record, right? And if those decisions have been made that those are the records, we have a responsibility to at least record them I know that some months vary in the amount of work that needs to be done because of how many meetings there are. One of the things that's happened because we do record them and we have started providing them is we've created an expectation. Um, in the old days, you would take paper minutes. Those minutes would sit on somebody's desk and be edited, brought back at the next meeting, right? At that point, those minutes would be approved, and then they would be available for public consumption. 
right? We don't live in that society anymore. So we have kind of created this need. We provide a lot of our stuff streaming. We provide archives. So this is becoming the record, the digital record, and you need someone to manage that. And, and I, I, I think it would be hard to go forward um, without um, a full time unless there's a set of rules that say it's not immediate, it's not instant, it's not, you know, our, our technology is only so good in its speed and it takes time to do what needs to be done, so. I'm in total agreement with that. Is this, <coughs> and I, and I, I think uh, beyond that, the ex, you mentioned the expectation, uh, they will have to be fulfilled in overtime. Mm -hmm. So uh, whatever, uh, I think we're better off with a full-time person. Nancy, yes. is this a full-time with benefits, 40 hour a week? That's what that 35,000 represents? Yes. Okay. Here's, That's here's the, actually, a, I think, a prime example of the meetings. Um, somebody had mentioned at one of our other meetings before how it used to be that you had to wait a month to get the minutes and, and get them approved. And for example, with all the stuff that's going on with this possible new school being built, to see that committee, they don't put their, on the school board, don't put that middle school advisory committee on video. So nobody knows what's going on for at least a full month. And that's less information that people are getting as to what's going on with the new school and stuff like that. And in this case, you've got the meetings up sometimes the same day, sometimes a day or two, that everybody can see what's going on and catch up on them when they can. And go back and say, well, wait a second, me. I think at this meeting, go back and review them a couple times if they want to. But, um, and with, this, with the school board, they don't do that, and I think people miss out on information. So I think it's important to have that. What's the town policy on full-time? What's the minimum number of hours? 32. 32? Would you be looking at salary or hourly? Hourly. I mean, it's not a salary position. It wouldn't qualify under salary under the Department of Labor rules. Well, what is it, what is it in here budgeted at? At 40 hours or 32? Mm -hmm. It's budgeted 40. at 40. <clears throat> at 40, so 35K, so like 17 bucks an hour? Yeah. It, actually, less than that because it includes benefits. I mean, it, it, if we're looking at 32, I, I'm just trying to sense whether you just automatically go right to 40 or you kind of incrementally get there. I don't think I want to, I think, nickel dime the hours if it's only eight. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. If it was a matter of 10, 12, 15 maybe, but when you're talking eight, um, I'm, I'm sure he's, he's good for it. You know what I mean? As far as what stuff needs to be done. And I think actually well, because of it, I think there's going to be more the, the other, on it. The other piece of it that we haven't addressed as much as we could is the, we got the going forward piece and then we're, we're trying to archive and and preserve our records going backwards as well. And so there's, there's plenty to do, for sure, plenty to do. Okay. Um, I mean, if, if you do it on a percentage basis, I'm just thinking, mm -hmm. okay. It's big. For 40 hours, it's 35,000. For 32 hours, it's 28,000. It's a $7,000 savings. Um, I don't know. I think we're going to get a little bit of 40 hours. Okay. Can't. Is, is it our employee? Is it a 40 hours? Oh, hour I, thought it was, I thought it was. Okay. It doesn't, it it's doesn't, change, it doesn't change the salary. Right. Okay. So there's, there's no. Salary position to right. It would put in for salary, though. Right. So that you could it doesn't matter the hours. You put in what you yeah, need to to get the job done, which is how it should be. Because some weeks you're going to have, me, you know, major budget time, you're going to have more. How are you making it a salary position? We make it a department head position, but I mean, I, I don't think we've answered the question precisely on the issue of you know the you need to look labor at laws. The department of labor. But rules. I think there is an alternate you view can't that if do you're that. you have to supervise at least two people, and and people have to, you know, you have to have authority over personnel to be salary. I, I mean, I, it's only for one time a year, but I supervise two people for that one time. So <laughs> all that counts. It counts. I don't think it qualifies. Well, but anyway, that's something we need to, to get yeah. more precision on there. I believe the Technology Committee has, has looked at 
Danielle, do you have something you want to add? No. Okay. So, <laughs> but anyway, I, I believe that, uh, that that's been, been looked into, but I can get a, a follow-up report on that. Would you please? Because I think the salary would add flexibility to the job. It, it does, but I don't think, think Lori Lawson yeah. said that it was possible to put it. That's why she suggested it. So, I don't know what the why. But there are, I think, three criteria you have to meet. I don't think it meets any of them. But. All right, so we'll leave it in there at 40 and then get some answers back. Yes, I'll get that to you as soon as possible. Okay. Anything else on the technology? We confirmed, I think, at our budget meeting that the even though the notes behind the technology um, department, I think our, our email stated that they did not include any money in their budget for the generator. It is one generator, not two yet. It's in the, it's in the, meal, in the email. That was a question that was brought up at the... Yeah, but that's a separate... <coughs> we already addressed the generator issue. We did, but the way it read before is I, I couldn't tell if... Oh, it was if it was in both equipment. budgets, yeah, and it oh, was confirmed okay. after the fact that it was not in right. both budgets, right? Is, is this also, what's the chorus mics that we're looking for for the audience? What exactly is that, Dominic? Dominic? The what? What's that? The chorus mics. Are we, are, is that what we're looking for as far as audience, getting more mics for that? Yeah. Okay. All right, moving on to community development, the only thing that struck me here was the $55,000 for community projects using timber funds. Were we applying those timber funds to projects that were that we discussed earlier? I can't remember. We did. Yes. Right. So this would just go right back into the. Yeah, you got to have a you got to have a revenue, a corresponding revenue. Right. So it's a wash. It's a wash. Yeah. It actually just goes back into a designated fund balance. If you didn't expend it, it would, yeah. Right? Yeah. It, it's one way or the other. You're taking it out of EDF one way or the other. Yes. Right? Yeah. I mean, if you didn't yeah. spend it, you would, it would so, be a, it So would you be could different. actually say this is actually going to be a $160,000 line because you got $55,000 in revenue coming into it. After you subtract all the other things like the down payment, Okay. Joe, I don't have any questions. This is a workshop, sorry. But, Bob, since you're on the Budget Finance Committee, I'll let you ask a question. Part of these funds are being suggested to be utilized for the Kineska Road Community Forest, in which we have a matching grant from Loon Echo, I believe. And that's where some of those funds are going. So there are funds being expended, so you're not going to wash. Right. But that's a separate question. That's also one that has to go to town meeting and get approved if we move forward with it. So this is a placeholder in case that is approved. Right. So in other words, we did send the question to town meeting, and so if the town meeting approves it, this is where the funds will come from. Right. And, and if they don't, they end up in undesignated fund balance. Correct. Anything on the fire EMS? I know uh, Bruce is hoping to get a clarification on an issue tonight that we've talked about outside of the, I guess, of this year's budget. Correct, Bruce? Correct. Um, I've been operating a 2007 vehicle that was bought at state surplus and uh, unfortunately after we purchased the vehicle we found that it had parked in a, in a swamp for a while and it has plagued us since then. <coughs> um, we've gotten three years out of it and outfitted it well with everything I need to, to operate effectively. Um, it, it electrically is, is becoming a nightmare very quickly. Uh, we guesstimate at this point in time, I think if we have the work done in-house here, it would be about 3000 and the ERG stuff and the cam sensor, phaser sensor, I guess it is. Yeah, it's cam tonight. phaser. Yep. Cam phaser, which is when you start the vehicle, if you hear it tonight, half the time it sounds like the engine is going to come out through the hood. It is really becoming unreliable. I carry a booster pack with me now because half the time the battery's dead. Um, 
there's something in it just draining batteries, and it's nothing that we've added. It's something on the vehicle side itself to test our stuff. So in our CIP funds, there there is money there, and uh, I was talking with Don about the possibility of trying to get another vehicle to replace that one. Um, we do have money in the CIP, as I said, and uh, would like to pursue at this time trying to get something that's more one economical, two reliable, and is going to last the town and the community more than, than the three and four years that we've been getting out of some of these used vehicles. Uh, one one of the cost impacts to buying the, the used ones, as as we save money on that end, is that you've got a red light siren, radio headset package, and, and all the stuff that I need to carry with me that gets installed and then lettered up, which is very costly if you're doing it on a three-year rotation. I think we get 10 to 12 years out of the new vehicle, maybe even a little bit more. Um, so I would suggest, if it's possible, or I'm asking, I guess, for guidance on how to go about using pre-existing CIP funding for replacement of that vehicle. It's already been approved at town meeting, hasn't it? That's yeah, been approved at town yeah, meeting. I guess yeah, this is more, yeah. I sent you out an email outlining the relative costs of what we've been doing versus this. Bruce would like to move in this direction. You know, I think economically, it's a, financially, it's a wash, really. Uh, I think reliability-wise, it's a, it's a significant improvement. Uh, operationally, uh, I think to spend less time outfitting these things every two, three years is an improvement. But the big issue really is you can't find them used at surplus. It, it's, they're very, very rare. So we, we pounce on them when we see them. Very rare. Um, this one was not a great one. It's now got 160,000 miles on it. Um, I'm, I'm with Bruce. Maybe, you know, maybe get something that you can keep for 12 years. But are you asking to be able to use the CIP funds you already have? I guess look at He's advising you that that's what he'd like to do we'll because, to do because, you know, in this town things can be controversial. They're approved funds for capital acquisitions. Well, that's he's, I being, mean, he's being transparent and letting you know what he's, what he's thinking. We I can mean, give you no guidance at a, at a workshop. Uh, workshop. No workshop. But I mean, the fact is, you've got the money. Right. It's pre-approved. The, the town approved it. You have the money. So It's, it's so a we, capital improvement yeah. for the fire department. Right. <clears throat> so we intend to go forward, I guess, I, is what we're saying. I, well, we're not saying anything because we can't, but, you know, I'm just asking the questions. I think you have the authority already. Right. Thank you. Thank you for nothing. Here you go. All right. Uh, <coughs> animal control. Mr. Desjardins? Can I speak? You're on the Budget Finance Committee. I am. If you add something to it, what we're talking about. Yeah. Well, you know, it's just uh, the uh, CIP, in my opinion, should be specific. Uh, it shouldn't be an EBT card, Mr. Bruno. And that's what we're using it as right now. Uh, and, you know, uh, if, if we're going to designate funds for the fire department, we got to know what they're going to be used for. Is, is it going to be used for an ambulance, <clears throat> a fire truck? We got to know these things. Same as Mr. White's department, but I'm dealing with you know the fire department right now, and uh, it's it's the funds were approved, mm -hmm. but they are approved, and they're expected to be spent wisely and. Uh, if, if the fire department wants these funds to be continued to be funded, they're going to have to specifically say, yeah, we want $75,000 this year, but this is what we're going to use it for. And this, you know, uh, this, this, no, it, it isn't, Sam. You don't know what you're talking about, so. Uh, no, uh, it's, uh, we're, 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 we're spending money that was, designated for an ambulance on other things and we were told things last year that aren't being done this year so that's all I'm saying thank you okay Nancy how much is in the fire department CIP account last I looked it was like a hundred and thirty nine dollars
That's, that's in the reserve. That doesn't count for you, the 75 for uh, this year. Correct. And, and we do the CIP every year, but it's not only for vehicles, right, Bruce? It, it, it's right. equipment, radios. It's fire equipment. Reserve. Right. Okay. And of course, we consider the truck to be, you know, expendable equipment, as in, although it's in the CIP, this town's chosen to do that. It's not, you know, going to result in a in a thirty-year asset. Right. So the question really is: Over twelve years, do you want to buy three ten thousand dollars used vehicles or one new vehicle? And so it's a wash financially, as I said, and I think the operational advantages are clear, and you know, yep. the cost of retrofitting and that sort of thing is a savings. And so, so that's what it is. Okay. All right, um, street lights, animal control, any issues? All right, we're in the public works now. I saw a memo that came out that we increased the public on uh, the maintenance line from 240 to 275. Is that right? In CIP. In CIP. Right. That was brought up at our budget <coughs> meetings, and it was corrected. Right. Yeah. Uh, anybody see anything that stands out? Joe. Yeah. One of the things that we, uh, on the uh, two part-time people for the summer, uh, we ran into some problems with unemployment. Apparently, if they work uh, two, uh, one complete quarter we will be liable for a percentage of unemployment. Mm -hmm. And uh, Danielle suggested that we look at uh, contract services, uh, like a labor services. Yeah. <clears throat> and we found one that was capable of doing what we want, but that bumps that hourly rate up to $18 an hour. It's a $3,000 or $3,100 increase in that. I don't know if that's absorbed in the uh, Social Security tax that we would have had to pay. That, that would... But care of some of that. Some of that. But your unemployment, what you would pay the unemployment is minuscule. hundred and something a week, I think. It all, it all depends on what the, if this is their <coughs> only job, then all their unemployment would come from us. That's if they work. To but you only, you only pay up to $12,000 in their total compensation on unemployment. So it shouldn't amount to a whole lot. Well, it was a, it was a risk. It's a, it, it, and I, it, but if you uh, was asked my, the question, we looked into it, and I was my, go ahead. My opinion on that one is this is one of those ones where, you know, you try to insulate yourself absolutely from a liability, <coughs> or you take a reasonable risk. Meaning, you know, sub, sub it out or well, use no, no, it, people. Without putting too fine a point on it. You know, I've worked in towns where we hired a summer crew and we didn't have this worry and we didn't realize any adverse outcomes. It's always a possibility. Yeah, you know, we've, we've hired college students, people like that. It's always a possibility. But you can't, I mean, you don't know who you're going to hire, depending on who applies and who has the best qualifications and so forth. But I've never run into it before, but it's something that could happen. But there's other businesses that have to hire part-time, knowing <clears throat> that this is a part-time position that they don't pay, you know what I mean? Because it's known as this is job from A it's, to B. It's a temporary position. Right. But so that's we don't have a season with the Department of Labor, as I call them. You can't call them seasonal employment. Not even, even right. the summer. But you can the call them temporary. You can, you can hire them, them for a certain amount of time right. and say, this is what I'm hiring you right. for and this is it. Mm -hmm. And we still have to pay unemployment on that after that period they of time? they don't get another job. Yeah, but they're hired for uh, from point A to point B. That's it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So well, That's why you try and that's why you try and hire college kids because they are going to go back to school so there's no choice of them wanting to stay right. all That's why Tess hires college kids. I, I didn't say that precisely that way. But, <laughs> yeah. So, <coughs> but, but that's what you do, yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. The other option is switch it to 11 weeks. Excuse me. Switch it to 11 weeks. Switch it to 11 weeks. Isn't 20 weeks? Isn't that the unemployment? I thought it was. Unemployment. That's what I thought it was. You have to work 20 weeks. 
that's what I understood it as. And Nancy brought it up. We talked to Labor Standard. partial ownership after five weeks, though. If you, if, you, if you employ someone for a consecutive five-week payroll, then you partially own them at that right. point. Partially own them. Wow. Yeah. But, but I mean, even if you have a, a, sub, amount, a, temp, a temp service, provide that labor, you still have to you pay that, say, $18 an hour, but then you also have to pay a percentage of liability on that. It isn't just that if, it, if they charge you $18 an hour, it's $18 an hour plus right. a percentage of liability because usually the temp service, you need to provide someone. Yes, if the person gets hurt or something to that effect, it goes under the temp service, but there is a portion is of that, that liability. Is that $18 an hour all-inclusive? I understood it as all-inclusive. That was my specific question was the unemployment and insurance. And they said that was all-inclusive inclusive in that $18 an hour. But do you hire somebody else from <coughs> contracted services that you have to babysit the entire time? Well, I, or do you hire somebody that you've interviewed, you've checked out, everything like well, that? You can go to the temp service and interview and say, well, correct. these are the people I want. <coughs> if you, and usually you, you pay them for you know, four hours, and if you, um, if you don't want them for the rest of the day, you've got to at least use them for that four hours. But if you do not like them right off the bat because they're unproductive or whatever the case may be, you can ship them out and say, I want a new one. Right. They'll give me a list of, uh, they'll pre-screen and then they'll give me a list of people to pick from. Okay. With background yeah. checks okay. all done. And, yeah. and that's another savings. We won't have to do the background check. They all they take care of that. What were you thinking of paying if you didn't go through a temp agency? Fifteen. Oh, okay. And that to... extra three dollars an hour, you yeah. better off go through a temp agency. Well, that's kind of what it, it looked like to me. Unless you were going to pay them 12, then you got to do the math. Right. I fear if you go too far down the scale, the quality of what you're going to get. You know, you're going to be handing over an $80,000 vehicle and a, and a Bobcat skid steer. And makes me a so nervous. you're not talking just flagging people. No, you're no, no. you're talking like laborers. Correct. These guys are going to be doing the cleanup on 302 and yeah. uh, brush work and sign work. And, a tough guy for that. Yeah. That was well, a, you know. Yeah. I, I agree with Lonnie. I'm not sure I would want a temp guy hauling equipment. The first call the first one was to manpower and they wouldn't even touch it because of the liability. Uh, right. And this other company they do uh the city of Portland, they actually have a couple of the pine tree guys that are working on our trucks out here uh, for that <coughs> service. Uh, so they have Various people with various Correct. skills, we can interview them and make our decision. Uh, I think you need to maybe look into the labor piece a little bit, yeah. and how much would unemployment actually cost you after 20 weeks and whatever it is. You should be able to look into a construction type, or construction yeah. based labor service too. Yeah. Okay. And not just labor ready, or tent, you know, or, or um, J and J, or there's a handful of them out there, and. Um, Probably not for fifteen bucks an hour. Yeah, but all depends. Yeah. All depends, all depends yeah. what skills you're looking mm -hmm. for. Right, but chances are, if you're going to pay them fifteen, your overhead's at least fifty percent, so that's twenty-two yeah. fifty. Right. So you, there is a little bit of room. Yeah, well, if you can look into some of the stuff for tomorrow night. And okay. Give us an answer. Any other questions for Nathan or concerns? Okay, solid waste. I think that's a pretty good deal that we have with, mm -hmm. with that. Cemeteries. We're going to go up on our fees, right? <laughs> have we explored that, Louise? No, I'm paid for yet, no. Okay. Think we could have that by tomorrow night? Possible. Okay. <laughs> You'll still get sleep tonight. <laughs> Parks and recreation. <laughs> yep. Can I speak up on that? Go right ahead. Uh, has any uh, anybody explored the fact that? Uh, Maybe we could get the fee from uh, Agwam uh, taken away. You mean waived? Waived. 
I don't know. Anybody? I haven't made a specific request to do that. I think at some level it may be dealing in bad faith. The, the vibe I get is that it's appreciated, it's a token, it's a good thing to do in exchange for the use of the fields. I haven't made a formal request to, to do that, no. Okay. I, don't, I don't feel comfortable with that. I don't think that's the right thing to do personally. Are, are they a nonprofit, Mr. Willis? I have no idea their, of their status. I assume uh -huh. they, they may be, but I, I don't know. Would they have, would they mow that? Mow they mow fields? it. They mow it. Or we, they bushwhack it. No, they mow it. But they mow but it. But because we use it, right? But we use they, it. We use it uh, four weeks. What, what you have there is a de minimis token. That it, it's a great. It's a great. Excuse me. It's a great uh, relationship. But I also think that Camp Agwam gets a lot of town services for because I think they're. Uh, that they're non-profit and I think they're getting a lot for for their buck and uh, what they're giving us back are the fields. Um, are you sure they're I, a non-profit? I think they, they're they're partially non-profit, Joe. Uh, they're, they're, they get... Uh, they, I thought it was partially non-profit. Yeah, too. well, it, it, no, they... Big bucks. I, I, please look into it and uh, don't quote me on that, but... Uh, uh, they do uh, uh, have nonprofit uh, affiliations, so uh, and 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 the uh, the organization is is got plenty of funds available that I think if we would ask, we could get the waiver on that two thousand um, dollars. I'm willing to do that. Uh, Garth is no longer there. He passed away last year, but uh, I haven't met the uh, new director yet. But uh, uh, and I've been involved with the uh, the soccer program in the past years. But um, you know, I can I can look into it. But uh, yeah, I, I I think I, I think if we ask for that waiver, we could get it because they get a lot a lot from the town uh, and. That's a, a service, I think, that I don't think they would mind to waive. The, no, no. the drift I got is 180 mm -hmm. opposite. I think that it's an appreciated token from the town. I, I think it's a mistake, and I would, I would direct, uh, I, would, I would think that if you're going to do that, it should come from a staff person. Oh, I agree. And, uh, I, I but, think I think it needs but I think it's a mistake to do it, and I can't get into details, but... Um, but I, but I don't think that uh, it's dealing in good faith. Well, nobody from the town ever initiated this deal. It was done by volunteers like myself and Pat Smith. Um, and uh, we worked with Camp Agawam to uh, get this deal. Uh, the town basically, uh, you know, agreed with, you know, to put it on the, uh, on the, in their budget for two thousand um, dollars, and what the, the two thousand dollars was originally uh, stated for was mowing, um, and what that enabled them to do was uh, get some money saved up, and they bought a really great lawnmower that's really you know it does a lot of area in a quick area uh, in a quick time, and. Um, You know, I they they got their equipment. Uh, they've been getting the money ever since. Um, they mow it. It's a great deal, uh, but uh, I think they they could do uh, the town of Raymond uh, a favor and say we don't need that money anymore. I know they can. So if if we ask them. Uh, and, and, and if I'm allowed to ask him? Uh, well, I, it really should come from the town administration if anybody's going to ask. I mean, yeah. you could ask him, but it, I don't think you should be the town's representative because the town ma that's the town manager's job. Yeah, yeah. So. I, I firmly believe, based on the feedback that I got, that the token is appreciated mm -hmm. and that, I mean, it puts a whole different, I guess it puts a whole different onus on it, too, if the town comes and says, geez, we don't want to pay this anymore, you know, what do you think? Um, 
Well, what if you were to drop it to say a thousand? What, uh, whatever you guys want me to do, I mean, but I think, but I, but I think, well, I'm looking at you have to look, you have to look at what you're getting, right. the use of those fields. Okay. I'll do whatever you want me to do, but, sure but I'm just telling you, I, I no, think this is I'm a mistake. Going uh, it's yeah, it's four weeks. It's, it's, I mean, it's four it's, weeks, then they probably mow it five times. Well, it, it's mowed year round, Lonnie. I mean, it's, it's, you know, they take care of it. You, 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 you've got athletic clubs that come in from out of state, uh, private schools that use it. Um, and Raymond Soccer uh, mm -hmm. bought some really good goals. And let let them use it but uh, um, what I'm saying is uh, uh, if, if we ask they might just waive it uh, they don't need the money their alumni is is I mean it's very deep um, and what they what they're doing is, is great but they're also um, tax exempt on certain things. So please, please look into that. Okay. I mean, I don't know. My, my feeling is that we've been doing this for a long time with them. We have a good relationship and why strain it? But Well, I, I just want to remind you, uh, about four years ago, it was destined or they, they wanted to cut that $2,000, Joe. And it was Mr. Reynolds that suggested it. So. Well, now uh, it's now funded through. Well, it's funded, but you know, it, it's it's a nonprofit organization. Um, they help the community as much as they can, but there are also other camps in this town that do the same thing. Kingsley Pines, you know, does scholarships for kids from Raymond, and they're nonprofit. They're not. They're they're for a profit. They get taxed. And they get taxed a lot of money. So why treat one camp? And I'm sure Kingsley Pines would open up their, their fields for the Raymond kids if they would be asked. So okay. thank you. Thanks. How do people feel? Yeah, Mike. Just do the same. I think that this <coughs> line item comes through Raymond Rec. I think we're talking about it without talking to Raymond Rec or the Raymond Soccer Program, and they ask us for the money. So if anybody is going to deal with the camp, it should be the soccer folks themselves. Don't we fund this through the Gullick um, Scholarship Fund? Well, we do pull $3,000 out of our revenues, for you. Right. which is part of it. But I just, I don't think it's our business. I think it's Raymond Rec and Raymond Soccer's yeah. business to suggest this to us, and yeah, I, I, mean, I would be mortified for the town to go and talk and, and get in between Raymond Rec and Raymond Soccer and Agawam. Yeah. No, I agree. Mm -hmm. so. Okay. Um, uh, can I ask about the Raymond Rattlers? What yeah. did, what, I know we talked about that. We have 1600 down in the year before. We paid 800 So right. We paid them less. We paid them 800 because the prior year we had paid them more than we actually received. Received, yeah. And so that was just to make up. It's paying on oh. snowmobile registrations. With so this the is making up for the year before. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right, Raymond, can, are we all done with that? Yeah. Raymond Village Library, where are we on this memo of understanding? Well, we were supposed to have a meeting last Monday. They canceled it or postponed it because of the, the, the snow, the slush we had that morning. So we're awaiting a rescheduled meeting. And uh, so, so I haven't got anything new to report on that other than I believe they have looked at, you know, some of the suggestions that uh, we made and they have a, a response. Mike has I can tell you what they do. They have looked. Well, Mike knows all sorts. Um, <clears throat> Since we first talked about this, the memo of understanding was changed by our council into an agreement. Right. Okay, that makes it far more specific as to the questions that the board brought up, including liability um, and things of that that nature. So it has changed substantially from what we saw originally. Um, 
We also have examples of other, what I would call agreements from other towns, um, that are far more in line with what the suggestions were from our council. Um, but we have not met again to get the feedback from the library as to what they, what they, they think. Um, they want to make sure they take time to understand what it means to them and get some more estimates on cost because of the insurance and liability issues. Okay. So. Yeah, yeah I, I'm just concerned that you got a $500 line item that could easily be $3,000. I think part of the um, agreement defines limits. Oh, $500. Well, it would does. be, if this is the limit we put in, yeah. then that's, that's where it would stop okay. for our support. So okay. it, it becomes yeah. much more of an agreement as yeah. opposed to the open-ended, yeah. which I know was a, was a concern of the board. Yeah, that was one of the things that our council put in. Yeah. yeah. So we wouldn't have that situation, That's right? right. Yeah, it's greatly, I guess, from the town <coughs> standpoint, greatly improved over what it was. Tighten up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And is everybody okay at the forty thousand dollar level? I think we should send it to the townspeople. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean. Well, they're also changing their hours. We're going to send everything to the townspeople. Well, I know, but the at, at, that level, at that level. At that level. Yeah. 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 Yep. Yep. All right, CIP. So, paving road maintenance is now at 275, right? Correct. Correct. And then we can pull out that 245,000 on the estimated payment on the proposed bond. Right. Correct. Pull yes. Pull we that would out. Pull that out and then put a number back in somewhere else, which would be under revenues, I believe. Right. Or, we have to put it on both well, yeah. well, there would be a new number that would show up in there based on X date of issuance. I mean, I think you need to come up with okay, if I'm, what would a million dollar bond payment look like? What would a $1.8 million bond payment look like? So, I guess my question is the other parts of, that were going to go in the bond, those are no longer going to be appropriated. They're going to be appropriated at an undesignated fund balance. Then they should still show. Right, but you've got to change the structure of this. This has right. to change. Yes, this can't be the way it is. Right. So right. I think but it, but it has. Just the bond. Right, but if we're going to use undesignated fund balance, you'd show an expenditure and then a revenue from undesignated fund okay. balance. Correct? Right. 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 Plus the bond payment. Is, is that what I understood? Yeah. It's basic. It would, it would come down somewhere around 1 6, wasn't it? Yeah, one one point six million would be the total of both. If you're doing what you're talking about, your bond payment would be forestalled until fifteen sixteen. No, no, because you. If you did it in April, it would be. Oh, if you did it in April, it would be. If you time, if you time it, your your first interest payment is going to be due in the fifteen sixteen budget, not right. the fourteen fifteen budget. Right. The question is, do you have to have the money ahead of that? Well, if you're if you're doing that of undesignated, that's your money. That's your seed money, and if you, it no. all comes down to timing. Right, exactly. But we need to pay for the rest of that fire truck by in ten months from July. So maybe it's ten which months. Which gets you to. Well, does it have to be ordered in July? Right. Maybe it's ten months from September. Well, I mean, I don't know, Bruce. Do you have any more years left on that thing? I mean, well, <laughs> <laughs> you probably delay a month or two, and, and in all reality, I I think that. Uh, by the time we get a set of specs put together, mm -hmm. once we get approval at town meeting, you're looking at a month and then another month to do a bid process. Yeah, yeah. And so it may be in the July. Yeah. Put you so then you then you August. could do an April okay. bond issue, which would yeah. which would remedy yeah. that, and this line would totally go away, and yeah. the line would go. Well, no, we'd have to put a line. You still have to put a line in for, for the for the cash payments, payments. for right yeah. with the, the explanation the, of that. Yeah. The quick, the quick answer is once you get to 24, 25 years old, a couple of three months, if it makes sense, works. Great. So let's <laughs> work that out. Hey, Mickey Rooney lived until he was 93, right? So I, I, know, I know you want to go immediately July 1, but I think if we can work this out, it makes sense to go a couple, three months. I agree months. that it'll yeah. take that long. And it'll take that long for your truck crew to figure out what they want. Exactly. Okay. Yep. County tax is what, 610000 Went down. Six seventeen five zero three. I don't think we should pay it. What is it? Six seventeen five zero three. So that's a savings of thirty eight thousand. 
Yeah, but it it was already on the new draft, right? So. Oh, I'm, uh, I'm still that working off the old, old one. one. Oh, okay. That's why I didn't open that one. <laughs> That's why Nancy brought her calculator. Which actually covers <laughs> the <laughs> increase in the road maintenance. Right. Yeah. Correct. Speaking of the county, uh, somewhat unrelated, but I did have an opportunity to take a tour of the new Civic Center with the uh, neighboring town manager, chairman of the Board of Selectmen. My impression is uh, just right, by the way. Not ostentatious at all. Uh, certainly not overdone, but a big improvement. But uh, I, I think probably, uh, you know, if anything, probably more money could have been spent there. Huh? Uh, as the chair of that building committee, yes. Yeah, so it was... Uh, <laughs> It was definitely a, a workmanlike job, a Chevrolet job, but it's a big improvement. I would say it was a Kia job. A Kia job? Yeah, we <laughs> did it. <laughs> but a big improvement. On the Tesla. But yeah. there's nothing there when you walk in the door that just blinds you, or dazzles you. Those, have you gone into the suites? No, I didn't there. That's what you gotta do. Okay. Those dazzle you. <laughs> okay. All right, the tip. Have we heard from Raymond Waterways or any of those groups at all? I don't believe we have. No. So we put we put a, pl a placeholder last year's money in, but kind of surprising actually. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm gonna guess they want the money. You know? Yeah. Yeah. But what do we do here? If they don't have the gumption to come talk and to us. for it. Take it out. We didn't hear from Ringland Rattlers either. Them too. Take it out. If they don't have enough. And they I'm were sorry, were they informed? By uh, letter or no, right? I uh, left a message on his home phone, his email was returned. Okay. Did you ever get a hold of him He was his his wife gave him the message. You're talking about the rattlers right now. Yeah. He was gone. What about he the uh, Raymond Waterways? Raymond Waterways reached out to us today. Yeah, and I gave I told them to contact you tomorrow. Oh, right. Okay. Um, no, uh, Ralph. Yeah. Uh, did we ever get the? Has, has have they run through the calculation to determine what the actual amount we have available in the TIF is yet? Um, what I got from current was because it is value and mill rate dependable, dependent for each. Ten cents that the mill rate goes up, it will add two thousand dollars to the tip. Okay, do we? So. But I, mean, I guess what my, my question is, you know, we you know we're budgeting two hundred one. That we're, but do we have more than two hundred one? Because right. when you got into the questions on some of the some of the funding that you're looking for for doing some of the upfront work on the ballpark, or, you know, on the on the. Foot, some of that is logical to fall under the tip yeah. if you got if you have overhead here. Right. And so I think it's important that we get a good handle on what that is because if we've got some if we have some room there, right. that's the way to relieve some of your taking out of surplus. Right. Instead, take it out of there because that's that gets to the heart of what we did the tip for originally. Right. I agree. Right. Uh, good. Good suggestion. Yeah. If we can have a little more definite answer by right tomorrow night. What <laughs> kind of a mill rate should he use? Depends on the mill rate. How well, much we have available. I, after making some of these changes, I don't know where our total budget increases. So what, what I was going to suggest is let's crank everything through and see right. where we're at. And that will tell us the answer, right? I haven't seen where anything's gone down. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. First two oh. issues. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, we're, the the big number that came down was the bond payment, the bond payment because we're taking that 285 out of undesignated fund balance. That means the budget's actually increased by that much. Increased. Well, there's a corresponding. And the same, that, that's exactly the way it was, too, right. so there's not going to be much difference. Well, I mean, we took $17,000 out of the first page. Right. Why don't we just run it, research it, bring it back tomorrow. So we took 30, uh, but we're going to add to revenue, though. 
we're going to add to both revenue and expense. Not the same amount. <laughs> Municipal budgeting is weird. It's not a debit credit type of system. Yeah. So, all right, yeah, so let's look at the TIF and see if we can increase it at all. One of the questions wait, I wait, guess... Wait, wait, wait. Go back and talk about uh, Raymond Waterways. What today? They, well, they, 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 they contacted today. Today? Yeah. So what they say? They're going to get a hole of Donna and Nancy tomorrow. But what about tonight? Is that right? That's no. what I'm asking. Is that right? No, no. I mean, the whole budget finance committee didn't hear from them. We reached out and asked for them, and they make a phone call the day of our week, our workshop, and we still don't have anything for our workshop, and we're supposed to make a decision on it tomorrow night when we're going to vote. Is that right? I'm not saying it's right, but it's what happened. <laughs> Is it acceptable? I, I think they have a little bit of an organizational uh, I have an organizational issue, issues right sure. now, and they're trying to work through that. But is it, would it be acceptable? The, the general answer would be no, probably. But it's a critical, you know, critical right. thing. So that's the same. That Raymond Radlows have some have some issues of, of the same. So that's a tough right. question. Yeah, but when it comes time to doing a budget, we got to know. Yep. And like right now, we're asking Nancy to give us some figures back, and we don't even know. I mean, you know, if Raymond Waterways comes in and says we want twenty-five thousand. I mean, I'm not. Well, no. which is going to be my guess, exactly. by the way. They're not going to come they in. Don't? They're not going to come in and say we want last year's appropriation. That's. I'm going to guess well, they're going to ask for. It. But I think the answer should be to them that we'll give you last year's appropriation at best. When are they going to get back to us, Mark? They say he just asked for John's contact information and schedule because he wanted to discuss finances. And I said, here, I copied in. We're coming the almost to the end of discussing yeah. the finances. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, we gave an increase in funds last year based on the fact that we're getting a second vote in the water. We don't even yeah. know if they got a second vote in the water. Mm. They, they did. They did. They yes, did. they did. They did give it a vote. Who, who did you talk to? Hmm? Who did you talk to there? Their new president, Bob Chapin. Bob Chapin. Yeah. Well, I didn't. He contacted you today? Yes. I, I, I think it like. Five, four or five o'clock tonight, so you'll see the email when you get home. Okay, well, I, I did get a frantic call from somebody who thought we were going to be disposing of tax accounts tonight who wants to make a new payment arrangement. <laughs> That's tomorrow night. <laughs> I, said, I said it's tomorrow night. You've got a one-day reprieve. See you in the morning. <laughs> well, any chance of uh, well, getting a number from them for tomorrow? Uh, yeah. I was, I well, Don's probably got an email. Or maybe have an email. I like, probably do, yeah. yeah. But is he completely new that he doesn't know about the budget process and everything probably. else? I, I kind of explained it a little bit when I saw him when he came to help interview for um, the 319 grant administration. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that he knew about the budget process. Did he know that we were sitting here tonight going over budget stuff? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so I'll, uh, I'll have more information apparently on that by tomorrow night. Makes, makes I'm looking very. I, I, I know it doesn't sit well. On the 17.5 number to stay the same. But I mean, yeah, the thing is, these folks yeah. do a lot of work. They do a lot of work. Yes, yeah, for 17.5, you know. we're getting a lot of work Peter, out. Peter, you had something? Yes, yeah, getting back to uh, the Raymond Rattlers, I noticed uh, we expect to only receive 1,400 in uh, revenue, but we're going to pay out 1,600. And I recall from the last meeting that we would <coughs> at best make that a wash. Yeah, that's what, that's what, that's yeah. what Joe suggested. Yeah. 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 I haven't done that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. One of the lingering questions <coughs> is MMA, whether or not we want to be members of MMA. And I can tell you my viewpoint <laughs> is no. I hate that organization. We get, what would you get for $5,200? It's supposed to be a dollar per resident is reduced, just like GP card. But they want to charge us fifty two hundred because we haven't been members in the last three or four years. And as far as I'm concerned, I don't think we would get fifty two hundred dollars worth of services. 
Well, we're the only town of any size at all that is not a member of them. Yeah, Bangor, I think, just signed up again. They yeah, did. Yeah, there are actually, do you want to, we found out the precise yeah. number. Do you want to, let me do that or you want to do that? Go ahead. Okay, so there are, there are three communities that are not part of MMA out of 487, including 486 communities, one Indian nation. Uh, <laughs> other than the town of Raymond, the other non-member municipalities are, and Nancy knows where these places are. Uh, Raymond, Raymond. De Dennis, Dennis Town Plantation, population. Pardon me? Dennis I said Dennis Town. Dennis, Dennis Town Plantation, population 33, and Codyville Plantation, population 24. <laughs> yeah, now, my feeling, Joe, is that there must be some reason everybody else, that is, everybody doing else is doing it and we're not. you got to be getting good I mean, $5,200 gets you a membership, but then there are a lot of benefits after that. Such as? Name one. Yeah. Health insurance. Legal. Handshake. Legal and training. Legal? Legal. They, they're Legal. not going to say, they will never give you an opinion of any merit. They say, oh, our opinion is, you know, this is what usually happens, but if you need more exact legal, you better call your lawyer. Why do towns have a law firm and MMA? But, Joe, that's your opinion. No, so that's, that's, no, that's no, fact. Saying, but what I'm saying it, it, is we it, just it, talked about cutting back on making more of a decision instead of going to legal all the time. So this way, if we can get that help from MMA that we're paying for... But you won't. Well, what they will give you is anecdotal kind of guidance, <laughs> right. advice. They won't go to court on anything or give you anything that right. you can yeah, take to the bank. That's the legal. Exactly. The singular reason that you are a part of MMA is basically if you want to be part of the property casualty risk pool or you want the health insurance. That's why you're a part of MMA. You can talk about the other stuff. It's nice. It's extra. You know, cheaper training, some anecdotal legal advice. You know, the idea that they're lobbying, if you agree with the way they're lobbying, which sometimes right. you don't. If you agree with their lobbying efforts, then maybe you get that. But what you're getting is their programs. That's what you get. But if you, so that, that's what you get. We can go to their programs as a non-member, right? Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. I don't know. No, yeah. because I know trainings are like double. I mean, you can get that's their, what I mean. Oh, you mean their, their training programs, yes. But yeah. Their training, not, their, not, their, not their health insurance. And their right. No, no, no but that. their trainings, we have to pay, like, to just go to an MMA for a select board. For members, it's fifty dollars. For me, that if I want to go, it's a hundred bucks because we're not members, so Correct. it's double. Yeah. What would you think about putting their health insurance out to bid? For example, find their out health what the find out. You know, how much we, it is. How much it is what if we're a member? What kind of plans? Member. I can tell you, it'd be twenty percent more than what we're paying now. Yeah. And probably wouldn't come. Well, the same. I know they're members. Okay. No, I'm just saying you're funny when you don't like something. You don't like it. But I, our, <laughs> MMA does give up to a two thousand dollar grant every year for fire department safety equipment. Up to two thousand. There's a bonus. <laughs> so now it's thirty two hundred. Yeah. Up to so. Discount maybe. The the issue the issue really, I mean to, to cut to the chase and be as pragmatic about this as I can, the issue is programmatically you went in a different direction, you know, four or five years ago. And so I think if you bid the insurance you're going to see what Joe's out, outlined. But it comes down to, you know, the different products. It's what it's so philosophically where do you want to be? You know, do you want to be on the direction you're on or on a different direction? That that's the question. They aren't going to compete on cost with the health program compared to what we have now. Right. That's just the bottom line. As far as the property casualty, the rest of that, they can and will. They're very competitive there, and they're very good when it comes to servicing the municipalities with the insur that insurance program. So that's what I have to say about MMA. So property casual, you said, would be potentially comparable? Yeah, competitive. 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 They could be competitive on that. They're not going to be competitive on the health program. They don't offer the health program that, that you're offering here, first issue. If you bid, though, what they do offer, the lowest quality program, let's say, the, they have different gradients. I can't forget what they call them, A, B, and C or something. If you go with their, whatever, their, their least good program, it isn't going to compete with that program. Cost-wise. Cost-wise. Right. Benefit-wise, it does. Oh, it's better. Yeah. It's a richer program. Well, yeah. That's why you're going to pay 20% more than what you're paying now. 20%? 20%, at least. Well, who is? 
The aspect of legal that I was referring to is, you're correct, going to contracts, being sued by somebody they don't handle. However, the nuts of, and bolts of running a municipality is what they deal with. And when we were members of MMA, I felt very confident being town, man, uh, town clerk that I could go to them with questions of legality having to do with the running of the town. And it was very, the, the attorneys up there are very helpful and certainly can steer you to the statute if you need to see it with your own eyes uh, as to where you can find the answer to your question. And it was, now what do you do? Um, pretty much I go into the statutes and try and find it myself. Do you spend your time? I don't consider well, that one a big one. Yeah, I, I think you have a town manager with lots and lots of years on him that can quote you. <laughs> he does. He quote is. you the statute. He is old. Well, I don't, I'm not sure in her area, but in my area, I'm very comfortable without right. that piece of it. But, but um, I'm back to where I originally was. Okay. It's a programmatic, you know, decision. Right. It's a decision whether or not you think MMA benefits this town at all. And in my opinion, it does not. I, I would tell you to pay the fifty-two hundred bucks, cut the chase here. Pay the fifty-two hundred bucks and don't participate in the programs. To keep I don't, that I don't say. This is one of the you never. That's my to opinion. It. But, but if you were to do it, I think if you were all in on MMA, you're going to have, you know, a different a different program than you have now. What do people think on MMA? I mean, you know my opinion. I, I haven't been very quiet on it. You, you don't want to Joe. rephrase that? And, can you show kind of more defense what you're trying to get? Yeah, really. No, Tina, spit it out, Joe. Uh, oh, it doesn't sound like we're, I mean, it, it does seem that we're going to use a little bit on the day to day. Mm -hmm. And I'd love to know how many hours that she spends trying to research that. She doesn't call them because we don't, and we're not members of them. So right, but instead of and us not being members, now she researches it herself, which means she spends more of her of her right. time, mm -hmm. which is the town's money. Or but I, you want I, to I think it. I think there's a process issue too. If you don't know the answer to a question, you mm -hmm. go to Don and go, "Do you know the answer to this question?" And then if he doesn't know the answer to the question, then it, then you know then you may need some fallback. What do you think, Teresa? I, I say give it a year and see how it works. Um, see how much we actually use it. We may not. We may we may find that the $2,000 alone right there is a nice little fund right there for fire. Um, just legal alone helps. I, and, I, and I think what you just said, literally just what you said earlier about, you know, let's not run to the lawyers so much more and maybe we can take some of those extra costs off. And, and, and I know your opinion of that is... They're not going to give you much one, but they may give it enough that we didn't have to ask the town attorney. Right. Do you think it would help hours, Raymond Plantation if we? Yeah. You think it would help mm -hmm. Raymond Plantation? What about? I, so would you lower legal and audit by? Fifty two hundred. Yeah. By yeah. fifty two hundred dollars. Yeah. Because you guys are overreaching on what you think MMA is going to do. Well, you. that's why I'm asking the question. I know, but this was also a couple of years ago that we've been out of it, correct? Yeah, and I know you don't personally we, like it. We haven't been in it for what, <coughs> four or five years now? Oh, nine, I think. Yeah. Why did we get out of it? Because they were useless. <laughs> I, actually, I actually looked to the opinion of Louise bit, and, and, <laughs> and Dawn. You know, if Louise bit, and Don feel that it's going to be a benefit and it's worth the money, then we should get it. If they I'm don't saying, feel it I'm is, then it's don't. A, I'm saying it's a benefit if you take advantage of their programs. If you if you rejoin and don't take advantage of their programs, I personally don't see fifty two hundred bucks. But what? by programs, you mean health insurance yes. and property cash? I do exactly right. That's the only two. That's no, the that, that, that was the big those are the big nuts. Not That's what spending fifty two hundred dollars on MMA. You would you you don't agree with that? I'm saying that I don't. I mean, and some of the staff members would disagree with me on this point, I'm sure, but I'm saying the reason the towns belong is not because of their advocacy, it's not because they can call up and get some, you know, anecdotal legal advice, it's not because they can go to a training now and then, it's because they offer a premium health program and a, and a good property casualty liability program. That's why they belong. That's all I'm saying. Okay, but take out the medical because we know we already can't touch that. Okay, why? so... And you, 
Well, because they already said that increase. Nancy just said that we can't. It's not going to be comparable or anything else. Correct? Mm -hmm. Nancy, it's going to be a lot more. Yeah. So that take that one, but property and casualty, you just said that it's comparable. And, and, that, right? and that's going to be competitive. It's not going to be, you know, it's not going to be wildly cheaper. It's going to be competitive, is what I'm saying. Right. If we cannot access the health program of MMA, then there's no point in doing it. That is the one program that would make it worthwhile because of the quality of the program. It would be $50,000 more to our medical mm -hmm. per year. More than we're paying. Now. Correct. So then you would add. 5,200 plus the 50,000, so it's basically 55,000 bucks yeah. no. to, to get back into that, I mean, the, if, if that's the reason you're joining, and then you yeah, have... That would be a big reason to join. Big dollar-wise reason to join. It'd be very expensive. Well, Raymond, maybe Raymond Plantation does not want to do that. Joe, just making sure we all know his opinion on this one. You, you have three lobbyists that walk around the state house all day. You oh, got this God. building in Augusta that is, you know, paid for by taxpayers around the state. I, I just think, and you got an executive director who's making two hundred grand a year. Pretty good nonprofit. But their health insurance arm is a for-profit division of MMA. Just so you know. Yeah. Hmm. You know, I can honestly say if I was really, I mean, just, I don't know if there is as many pros. There, I, I don't think there is. And, and you know, Joe, I'd be fighting you tooth and nail if I really 100% was for it. So I just got to tell you, I'm very familiar with MMA. Well, right, from, but from I just think more because of legal them. is what I'm thinking. One thing you could do, I guess, illegal. one thing you could do, I mean, you could reserve judgment on the whole thing. If we're going out to bid on insurance again, you could send out a bid yeah. to them. And have them reply, sure. and of course you could put the. I consider the yeah, entrance fee. Idea. I consider the entrance yeah. fee, the membership, as right. a part of the cost of doing business. Right. Yep. So you would put out a bid to them. Hopefully they would agree to bid with us being non-member. You'd add that fifty-two hundred bucks onto whatever the bid is. Then you would evaluate the bids you get back for property casualty and health insurance, and say. And then you'd know the actual dollars. Is it twenty percent, thirty percent, fifty percent, ten percent? And you could look at the program they offer versus what you get for what you pay. Then you can make a decision. Tell them, I, tell I, them your consideration is based uh, of joining them is based on, a, on there you go on your health insurance and there your you property go. casualty the rates. Well, Mike brought up a really good point. He was explaining something to me. In 2010, 11 is when you guys had MMA and the medical was 265,000, and this is 1415, and our medical right now we're coming in at 240,000. Right, it's not. We haven't be cheaper. we haven't lost any employees. I just asked them. We it's, actually had it's, it. It's not going to be cheaper but it's not going to be what we're offering. Well, if we go to them, like you said, we at least keep it on the table here, which mm. is what I want to do. Mm. Now, we yeah. left yeah. We, yeah. we left MMA in fiscal year 10-11. That's what I just said. 265,000. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Huh. Um, okay, I don't think it's worth it. But I, but I like Joe's suggestion, too. You say... You know, the uh, rejoining the MMA is going to be based on the quotes. Let's yeah. see what they come back with. All right. <laughs> yeah, why don't you ask? <laughs> in, in Joe's opinion, tomorrow night is not going to change. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, we need to look at revenue side of things now. I think that's the last thing we need to look at, right? Right. You know, the big one there has been the uh, revenue sharing. We've been trying, Mike and I have been corresponding with our state representative, and um, we haven't got a definitive. Uh, the best number we have right now, we think, is the number that's on the MMA website. Where? Where 109,000? <laughs> is what we is what we think is the best we, the best analysis we have right now, so that's what we're going with. Can you repeat that again, please? 108,490. Yeah. So that's down from the 117, 531 right, right. that we had as a placeholder. But see, this is where you could have called your state rep who could have gone to well, we did that. <coughs> to DAFs and said, what's the number on revenue share? And they would have given it to you. They didn't give it to him. He tried for three days. They didn't give it to him? He left me a message saying, he said, um, you're going to get what you got last year, best I can tell. 
Is he calling the right people? I don't know. Nancy, what did we get this year? Do you know? Was it the 117 that you put in as a placeholder? That's where they came from, is from the state projection. But for the year we're in? That's right. Okay, thank you. So even though they put 40,000 back in, 40 million, 40, excuse me, 40 million back in, it looks like that would have been on top of. I just meant they didn't take it out. Right. Okay. So it wasn't really a back in. It wasn't an addition, which is what I was hoping for. Excise taxes, you feeling good on that number? Well, how are we running this year? Might even be able to go a little bit higher. Yeah. Yeah. Because the last revenue control report I saw, it was, it was trending higher. I'm going to buy a car. Are you? No. Yeah. <laughs> we'll add 10 grand. <laughs> Not that kind of car. Not Joe's car. You had to bring that up, didn't you? <laughs> I remember that in a debate last yes, year about my vehicle. <laughs> So you think we can get the 780? Uh, well, we got 790 last year, so 780 looks doable. So you got 790 last year. Well, yeah, but this March was down like $17,000. So yeah, but you don't know. It's all timing. Month month. But people well, don't want to drive on 85 with a brand well, new well, March is what it is. This, this March was terrible weather-wise. Yeah, weather-wise, really people right weren't there. shopping. So. You couldn't shop. All right, 780. 780. I'm going to put sides out by new cars. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody see anything else? Parking fees. We need to start getting parking more people fees. for parking. Yeah. Yeah. No. Hey, Chris. Mm -hmm. Yes. I haven't picked on you yet tonight. You've been yeah. quiet. He's been holding his <laughs> <laughs> So. I was excited to read your report about the commercial district. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, you got a follow-up report you were telling me, too. About all report. the activity. I think it's so, great. terrific. Yeah. If that kind of enthusiasm and activity comes into the private sector, is it possible we could put a higher number on tree growth? Because people will find value in building another house or in splitting a lot or selling a lot? Or building permits? I think that um, <clears throat> what I'm hearing, it's the same thing. March was down because of the weather. I think we have um, a few projects that I foresee coming in on the lakes again in the million dollar plus range, which we didn't have last year. But that wouldn't be tree growth gr land, probably. No, no not tree growth land, land, no. CEO fees. I'm talking yeah. about CEO fees. Um, I think permit fees may increase. Uh, this year, over last year. Um, tree growth, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know how to answer that question. No, we've had a couple more people apply for tree growth, but we aren't looking for no. penalties. No. We had like one more person apply, but it's in terms of penalties. But the pe this is penalties, right? This 8000 is when yeah. people take it out of tree growth. Right. And all that money goes to... No, that's reimbursement. That's not that's penalties. That's right. tree growth reimbursement. That 8000 oh. Those penalties go to uh, Raymond. All oh, right, they go directly in. Yeah. Mike, if your question was, do I foresee um, more residential developments in our rural areas? Not right yet. Okay. Double. And the reason I say that is we have so many subdivisions that are already pre-approved with uh, lots of undeveloped lots. Okay. And their price is down really low right now. So those lots need to get built out before we're going to see... Uh, more subdivisions. Now there is activity at Rosewood again, um, which is a sign that things may be turning. But I'm I'm going to be reserved that I don't I don't see a flood of building permits coming in this year. When you say activity, you mean down that Rosewood Heights Correct. section? Correct. Yeah, we've got one lot sold in there, hmm. pending, and they've posted a bond, a performance guarantee for that road. Hancock has. Oh wow! So that. Um, I anticipate them yeah. at some point moving forward. I think they're testing the waters. Okay. So that 45 can go back up to last year, maybe to 50. I, I think it may, might. So are you confident that we can get to 50? 
How you feeling, Bucky? How you feeling, Bucky? Yeah. 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 I think we could put it back up to 50. Okay. <laughs> and if you don't make it, Chris, it comes out of your salary, baby. <laughs> Don't you need more solid ace bags? Really? We'll go up to surplus money, Toyota Prius. What a Kia. Kia Sportage. Yeah. Two wheel drive. Um, lien charges. Are those penalty fees that are paid on taxes, overdue taxes and lien charges? The foreclosure market slowing down? We're going to find that out tomorrow or not? We're going to find out it's going more? Gone? Um, I know, that's tomorrow. But I, I don't know. I, don't I think can't imagine it's going to be that I don't think it's I don't think there's much change. I think right. it's the same. Yeah, exactly. There's not a whole lot left out there, is there? That, I, I think it's going to slow. What get a big chunk and then right. when it comes forward to you folks, they, yeah. they quickly scramble in and take care of it. Right. Well, like I said, I had a, I had a panic a call problem. tonight. No. You know, so, yeah. yeah. All right. Like we had a couple big ones that got resolved last year, and then um, one that we used, used a successful land contract, and that one got paid off earlier than it was contracted for, right? Okay, so if if there aren't any other things that we could squeeze out, I guess we need to see what the new numbers look like tomorrow. Maybe follow up on some things. What's the fund balance contribution going to be? I gotta go back and was the that was bond payment. All right, now I gotta go back and find that note. I wrote. I somewhere. had two eighty five. Yeah, is that right? Two eighty five is what plus we got. Plus the one seventy five. It was. It was yeah, it was. And plus one seventy five. Two eighty five five plus the one seventy five. So okay. round it to four sixty one. Four sixty one. Yep. But you you also have that other fifty five thousand out there for the timber sale. That's listed. Okay. That's listed right here. Gotcha. Yep. Any other questions, concerns? Anyone from the budget finance? Questions? Things you want answers to, Bob? Uh, what well, part of your agenda tomorrow night is your budget vote? Is it first off or is it later in the agenda? I'll turn to my select chair. First off. According to the paperwork. Danielle. It's first item on the agenda. Can yeah. you start at seven? Yeah, Marshall. Could uh, I ask Don for a number on the past two taxes in relation to previous years? Sure. Kind of like to keep track on that. That went up just a little while ago. Yeah. It's quite similar. Okay. We'll resend it though. How about that? Yeah. Which, which one is that? We'll bring it tomorrow night. Brian? Brian? The only really comment I would make is on the bonding. Um, I think the more we can um, create um, the, sorry, the articles so that people can. In, sorry, let me back. In that we have not had a, any kind of review or questionnaire from the community, we're all kind of working with our best guess of what people want in town. So I applaud the idea of breaking out, for example, the Egypt Road project as a separate thing. Is it possible to also look and see if we can even get a little bit more finite on some of the articles? Um, so in other words, maybe put all the, IR, the other IRT stuff together, separate from the pole barn, separate from the fire truck, so that so that the townspeople can actually... You can you can have a separate question for each yeah, one of those. Yeah, and I don't know where the balance is. I don't want to go so granular that everybody gets, because it's, then it becomes overwhelming and people haven't done the, the work that we've done. But I'd love for it to be a place where the townspeople get a chance to kind of weigh in on what they value and not mm -hmm. have it, which I'm really glad to hear you guys not saying, okay, we're going to lump the, you know, whatever the final number is all together in one thing. I think breaking out Egypt, the Egypt uh, recreational thing is a great example. I would just look to, because this is something that the Budget Finance Committee wouldn't do, is should, the should there be maybe two or three other articles with a logical lumping 
of those of those things that would ultimately roll up to create the bond <coughs> in question. Because it's one of the areas that was brought up. You know, we're moving fairly quickly on this, or that way townspeople could, could weigh in. One one of the things that happened tonight is I think we're down to three items only for bonding. Okay. And the other items will be handled at town meeting. Because okay, everything is going to come through an undesignated fund. Become, okay. Coming through undesignated right, fund. Right. Right. So, so it may not be as big an issue. So it's going to be fire truck, well pole barn, uh, and, and sand or, salt. Excuse me. Yeah. Sorry. Salt. Sorry. Salt. Slippery rope building. I am. <laughs> <laughs> sand, sand salt, <laughs> fire truck, right. fields. Yeah, that might be the way. I mean, those three, if there were each articles, I think that might be a really valuable thing. And of course, n not to. Oh, okay. Uh, you, you, Rolf, Rolf yeah. raised his hand first, or is he just stretching? <laughs> no, I, I raised it. Uh, I think it's in, you know. I think what would help too is a program construction schedule, because what we do on the bonding, we you know we we got some flexibility on when we when we take it out and we do things. However, once it's taken, you have only three years to expend the money. So. If we're looking at a project that's going to be a long-term project, you have to look and make sure that we can expend within the time frame of that. So it really looks at laying out the construction schedule as well as the engineering schedule and things like that. Did you yes. There's a schedule on the last page of the IRT project that breaks down how the projects are laid okay. out. That, that's got to tie back into how the, bond, how the bond... I think 18 is when they're talking about finishing the last of the stuff, if I remember right. It's summer of 8, not budget year 18, calendar year 18. So if we went out in April of 15, three years would be... But the, the only cautionary note there is, have you ever seen a construction project finish on schedule? <laughs> And it's an important consideration right. when you're looking at the fact that you have to expend that funds in that amount of time. If all of a sudden now you slip out a year, you're now outside the bounds of what you've gone to. Huh. Mm -hmm. Correct. I ain't never seen a construction schedule go on time. Yeah. <laughs> Please. Um, You've mentioned town meeting with these, this bond situation. You've also mentioned referendum. Now, if it's brought up like a public hearing at town meeting, then it's possible to go to referendum after it, so long as there isn't a vote at town meeting. But that's something you'd have to worry about. I shouldn't say worry about, but decide before we get the warrant put together. We were talking about a public hearing for the Egypt Road project in May. We have a date reserved. That would be in the ballot box, in my opinion. The board has not <coughs> spoken on that. And I would assume also the second um, bond, if we do split it in two, would also go to the ballot box, would be my guess, as opposed to town meeting. But the undesignated fund balance stuff, I think, would be town meeting. Joe, Sam, way, I don't know. But I mean, that was where my, my brain was on those yeah. three sets of items. I, I, I'm not sure that I agree with that scenario. I, I think one problem with that is, is probably maybe what you're thinking about, I think you have to wrap up each um, vote in a particular action. So you'd want to, in the, in the vote for each particular thing you were trying to do, lay out how you're going to finance and fund it mm -hmm. and, what, and how that was going to work. So it may, had, it may not work that way. Yeah. So if you had, if you had a, if just that would be just the first thought I had. So if you had, on the one side, a town meeting, open town meeting vote on, you know, the revenue piece, but then the expenditure piece, through a bond at the ballot box, then there's a disconnect to some degree. Right. Maybe. Or not. I mean, you tell me. That's yeah. I mean, that's part of not understanding the well, best, yeah. best way forward for this. I th I think if you're going to talk about one bond. Three separate projects, you talk about them all at once, whether it's at town meeting or at the ballot box. But I think town meeting is more appropriate for this type of conversation. Marshall? Uh, could these be 20 year bonds again? 15? Nine. Probably 10. Probably 10. I think that's what you mapped out on that. that. Yeah, that's what the the only thing out. that we've taken out longer than 10 years, I believe, is the public safety building. 
Well, that's, so, that's why I raised the question, because you've got two pieces of uh, real estate in there. So you may want to think a little bit more. Hmm. We, we've tried to stay with a shorter term mm -hmm. as we possibly can. We have in the past, I think we went 15 on the public safety. Was that right? Or is it 10? Well, yeah, yeah, 20. No, the, the road was 10. Roads are 10. Roads are 10. I, I think so the public safety was 20. No, I, I want to say no more than 15. No, it was yeah, 15. 15. So I think I think the original road bond was 10. The ambulance and the fire truck were 10, and the so it um, expires in 17. Yeah. So and the building was 15, I think. Yeah. Any further questions, comments? We're adjourned.